Okay, our streaming has started. Uh, good morning, everyone. We can get started. During the declared emergency in the Toro City of Toronto, Committee of Adjustment virtual public hearings are being conducted by electronic means through WebEx, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements in a provincial order that limits attendance at public gatherings. This will be a pu virtual public hearing, and participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx, an online event that is being moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting either by their computer, a phone or tablet app, or by telephone. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. Uh, the participants in today's hearing will be participating by audio only. The committee members are all here uh, present today. Um, and uh, so we start off in land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act, 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto was called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to the property, permissions to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consents to sever properties to create new lots. Anyone who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the Committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because Committee of Adjustment and TLAB in the event of an appeal will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you don't agree with the decision of the committee rendered here today, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, TLAB, and in some limited circumstances to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal or LPAT. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure is as follows. Uh, in the virtual world, we go in order. We go through each item in the order listed on the uh, hearing agenda. Uh, when you make your submissions, where an application is uncontested, the applicant or agent will only proceed with an application if required. The committee may ask questions of the applicant and or take the matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant agent, will be given a f maximum of five minutes to address the committee. And Mr. Palmer, who will be monitoring the clock and will notify you when you're uh, reaching the five minute mark. This is particularly important on a number of the uh, hearings before us today. We have many registered speakers. And in the non-virtual world, uh, the parties meet before, appoint a few spokespeople. And uh, not everyone speaks, but in, there's no opportunity to do that in the virtual world. So everyone is registered and registered to speak. So I'll just ask everyone to please, if you're just um, repeating the same concerns that you're not for uh, an earlier speaker has made. There's really no need to reiterate the same concerns if um, that it won't advance your cause. We, if you have something new or a different perspective, certainly, but we don't need to hear from 16 people all saying the same thing. So where there are people in opposition, the applicant goes first, makes a presentation to the committee outlining their application. And um, please note that the committee uh, will not entertain revisions to the applications uh, at the hearing today. Uh, that's typically a situation where we're unable to do so, but even more so here because these are Toronto East York files, uh, and this is uh, the Etobicoke panel, uh, the Etobicoke York panel. So any uh, items also that are deferred today will be referred back to Toronto East York and rescheduled uh, at, at their hearings. So when you address the committee, please start off by clearly stating your name and address for the record, and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. So the applicant goes first, then, um, then the neighbors are each given, uh, subject to what I have to say, the neighbors get an opportunity to speak, and after all the neighbors have spoken, uh, 
in favor uh, uh, or opposed, the applicant uh, or agent will have a further uh, period of uh, five minutes or slightly more if need needed to rebut only those issues that are raised by the speakers, not to uh, provide us with new evidence, but only to uh, hone in on the issues and answer any questions that were raised by the neighbors. Okay, just to introduce the members before I hear today, on my far left, Mishi McCloskey, on my near left, Sophia Roddick, and on my uh, right, uh, Neil La Palmer, and my name is Michael Clark, I'm your chair. Uh, so some preliminary matters. Uh, the first is to confirm the minutes of the last meeting, which is, I believe, November. Uh, uh, we didn't actually get them finished, so okay. we'll have them for you next week. Okay. Uh, are there any declarations of interest of panel or staff on the matters before us in this morning's agenda? None to declare, thank you. Any uh, files to be closed, Madam Secretary Treasurer? None today, Mr. Chair. Okay, and in terms of deferral requests, we'll, we'll uh, suggest we do that as we go through the agenda? It'll be easier, yes. Okay. Okay, in that case, we can get started with uh, the first item uh, on the agenda, 21 Verbena Avenue. Uh, this is to alter the existing two-story detached dwelling by constructing an attached garage, a new covered front porch, a rear terrace, a front side and rear two-story addition, a partial third floor addition, and a side third floor balcony. There's, uh, with all of that, there is um, four variances. Um, we have one, uh, one opposition letter. We have... Um, a deferral request, and we have this actually on a number of items before us uh, this morning. Uh, and all of the applications in um, seemingly the Hyde Park uh, uh, area, Swansea in particular uh, area, which was previously part of Etobicoke, York, was switched downtown as community council for Hyde Park went uh, downtown. And because uh, community council wishes or city council wants uh, the backlog caused by COVID to be cleared up. We are doing this hearing today. So on all of the, um, perhaps we can deal with this in one time, Nicholas Singh of the Swansea Area Ratepayers uh, Association uh, representative has written a letter referring to, I believe, five applications and all of them they talk about the, which is unfortunate, uh, some confusion was caused between Toronto East York and um, Etobicoke York and when the hearing was. Uh, however, um, and there was a discussion about a deferral, but I think in most instances, or all instances, we did have quite a number of letters uh, written in, quite uh, informative letters, detailed letters, not just I oppose or anything like that. So people, notwithstanding the tight time frame, certainly did have, seem to have time to get into that. Okay, so getting back to item number one, and we'll hear perhaps we have a uh, couple of letters of opposition. We have... Uh, registered as uh, quite a number of people and registered to speak, including Mahir Manios, the agent, uh, who will go first. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight speakers, including the uh, Ratepayer Association. Um, so welcome. Is Mr. Manios there? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Mahir Manios, I'm the agent for the owner. Okay. Um, would you like to? Should I start? Yeah, I guess we have. Uh, we should need a presentation from you this morning on this uh, because we have a number of people uh, here with opposition. We do have a couple of letters. I assume you've read those letters, and you you know uh, some of the opposition. Uh, what it is? There's eight, yes. seven opposition letters. Okay, so why don't you uh, take us through your application, please? You have five. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, as uh, explained, the proposal is for a two-story rare addition plus a partial third floor contained above the existing portion of the house. We are requesting four variances under the new bylaw only, no variances under the former uh, City of Toronto bylaw. Uh, variance one being the FSI or GFA, we're proposing 0.93 versus the allowable 0 0.6. I'd like to bring to the committee's attention that the, the actual two-story portion is at 0.77. And the third floor is completely contained within the hip roof roof line. The only thing visible of that third floor is the required uh, means of egress from the third floor on the west elevation, uh, which also complies uh, with height requirement. Uh, it's required for, under the building code. That's the only reason we have it, and that's the only thing visible of the third floor. 
Okay, so you're saying you're at 0.7, you'd be at 0.77, but for the third floor? Sorry, I just want to clarify. So you're saying you're at 0.77? Correct. Other than the third floor, which is completely in within the roof line. And Correct. So you Okay. Thank you. Just want to clarify. And do you know what it is now before the uh, before the proposed uh, re uh, changes? What's it at currently? The FSC. At the existing house? Yes. I think it's around point. I think the existing yeah. house is at around point five, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, variance number two being height. Uh, we're proposing ten point seventeen versus nine meters. And just to give a point of reference, we're about 15 inches higher than the recently renovated uh, East neighbor. Uh, we do comply with the wall height. We don't have a wall height variance. So the roof is completely hipped, which reduces the massing of the house. Uh, variance number three is sort of technically in nature. Uh, it's the eaves, uh, given the fact that the existing uh, west wall is only eight inches or 10 inches away from the property line. We actually, the existing house has an eight inch overhang and the eaves drop encroaches onto the west neighbor. Raising the roof up, what we've proposed to do is to actually reduce the overhang to two inches plus the eaves drop. So um, actually, as per the drawings that we submitted, we have a four and a half inch space between the eaves drop and the property line. But for some reason, the zoning examiner noted it as being zero setback. But even if that's the case, we're still improving on the existing yeah. condition okay. where the eavesdrop are completely over encroaching onto the west neighbor. Okay. So it's, so it's, it's an improvement on the right existing now. condition. It's an improvement. Uh, variance number four, uh, the last one being the parking space. Correct. It's an improvement. Uh, the last variance being the parking space we're proposing to demolish uh, the detached garage in the backyard, which is accessed by a seven foot wide driveway. So it's basically not drivable to get to it. And I don't think it's ever been used uh, because of this restrictive uh, setback. Uh, so we're proposing to do an integrated garage, which is 2.9 meter wide. And that's sort of the maximum we can fit given the fact that the house is uh, barely 26 feet wide. Um, I'm not sure if you want me to go over the issues which were noted on the letters of opposition or if you prefer well, if you want to just whoever neighbors are registered to talk and then I can address them all at one time. So it's up yeah, to we, you. Mr. We Chair. still have another two minutes if you want to just just get into the uh, my next question was going to be so why is why are there eight people registered to speak? What's what's uh, what's the big hue and cry? Have did you or your clients so, uh, speak I'll to the just, neighbors I, before I you? I just also want to know whether you tell us sure. whether you've actually consulted with the neighbors or your client has, because it looks like most, you know, a lot of the adjacent neighbors, 23 is the first speaker right next door, 25. So they were packaged. Um... So my, my club. We're losing you. Sorry, sir. Right, uh, Mr. So Manius, we can you just repeat? Package, we just uh, lost you. Include the uh, list of variances, site plan, all the elevations, and my client dropped them off to uh, some of the neighbors on Verbena, and he spoke with the twin. Sure. Uh, sorry, can you hear me now? You're you're cutting in and out. So just you want to repeat the last thing you said about the consultant. You said me. your client dropped off packages for the neighbors. Yeah, so we prepared that and he dropped it off to a few of the neighbors on the street that he spoke. I know he spoke with the two immediate neighbors, but at the time they didn't, uh, my information is they didn't raise any concern about the actual uh, design and the application in front of you. Uh, so I've, I've went through the letters of opposition from the, that's on, on file. And it seems like the main issue being the GFA. And as I had mentioned earlier, Mr. Chair, that the two story portion of the house is at 0.77. The excess GFA is completely contained within the hip to roof line. There are numerous uh, similar applications which have been approved over the years. We've consulted with city planning. We've provided a list of all these previous applications and we've also emailed the same information. I think it's on the city website that notes all these applications within the immediate neighborhood. Uh, the height, as I mentioned, uh, we are 
15 inches or so higher than the house to the east, which has just been renovated and added onto, and we do comply with the wall height. So even if the GFA was reduced, the massing of the house will still be the same. And uh, the eavesdrop, as I mentioned, was a, an, it's an improvement to what's there right now. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, uh, before we move on to the neighbors, does anyone have any questions for the agent, Mr. Manios? Okay, um, so you're saying you're su most of the concern is with the GFA, the, you know, because, and you're saying that it's ma mainly with, without that it would be at 0.77, which I'm sure the neighbors wouldn't have any problem with. So question for staff before we go to the neighbors, can we have, does, do they have some kind of a provision where we'd say that, where that would be explained because obviously if it's within the roof, it's within the roof line, but it, it, if it was an open attic, it wouldn't appear any different. I don't know if there's, because there's some windows or dormers or whatever, but we don't typically do that. It would be approved that whatever the GFA is, and then people are gonna come and say, look, this house got 0.99 or whatever. So anyway, let's move on and let's hear what the neighbors have to say, but uh, specifically about the fact that out of the uh, 0.93 times the area law at FSI proposed that 0.77 is uh, what it would be without what's contained within the roof. So the first speaker is um, 23 Rabina, Mr. or Mrs. Hillgrove. But we're having one speaker from each, uh, each residence and I'll repeat what I said at the outset. Because we have on a number of applications here today, we have many, many speakers and this one we have eight or number three, we have 16 or, or something like that. Um, in the non-virtual world, people meet outside yes. the room, they appoint some uh, spokespeople. Yes, speaking. Sure, just let me finish for a second. So just when you're listening, all the neighbors, if you don't, if someone's already said some concerns, you don't have to keep repeating it by subsequent speakers. Um, if there's new information from your perspective where you live, let's say the backyard neighbor versus the next door neighbor, that's obviously different. But if just to bring in the same concerns, we don't have to hear from eight people saying the same thing. So having said that, just for everyone's uh, benefit this morning, uh, we have Mr. Hillgrove. Good morning, sir. Is Mr. Hillgrove there? Is anybody else there? Yes, hello. Oh, there How are you? you? Hello, are well, you? Well, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to uh, address you today. Sure, you're in our next door neighbor. Uh, Mr. It is Mr. Hillgrove. Do you hear me? Yes. Hello. We, yeah, we hear you now. Hello. Hello. We're here. Yes. We can, can you hear, hear you. Us? Can you go oh, ahead sorry. with your presentation, can, please? Can you hear us now? Can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, yeah, I'm uh, on the, the west side neighbor, and uh, I appreciate what the agent has. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, in fact, slightly less than half the available. Hello. I, am I going to be interrupted during this whole thing, or? Hello? No one's Hello? interrupting you, sir. Yes, I'm, I'm waiting. <clears throat> Hello, one, two, three. Yes, we can hear you. Can you please make your presentation? Hello? Hello. All right. Uh, can you hear us? Well, we have to make something. I think there's a we delay. We can't hear you. Okay. And when we're speaking, you seem to interrupt. I think there's a delay. So in, when, now? in when you can hear us. So if you can call I us. Can from the number I'm going that to make you my provided. What? Because we're having yes, we can with hear you. We can hear you, and if you would stop interrupting, we'll continue with the presentation. Thank you. Give us a moment. Give us a moment. <laughs> well, this is going about as well as I thought it would.
Mr. Chair, why don't we go on to Brent Chorney? We're calling now, just so you know. And hopefully we can go back. Okay, together. is Brent Chorney there of 20 Verbena? How about the neighbor on the other side, David and Karen Campbell? Who do we have now? Brent? Yes, I am here. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yep. Hello? Hello, Brent? There's a lag, eh? Hi, it's Brent Shorty. Oh, so the screen is behind. Okay, go ahead, Brent. Hello, everyone. Uh, I, I, you should go on to Darren Campbell. I'm just going to there. Can you, can you acknowledge your journey? Yep. Perfect. Thank you so much. You start off by stating your name, because we're still not sure who's speaking now. Oh, sorry, it's Brent Shorney. Okay, go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to confirm that uh, I've, I, I'm Dave and Karen Campbell across the street from us. We, we, uh, we're representing each other equally and jointly, so I'm going to pass you over to them. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. David, David or Karen Campbell, 19, right next door on the other side. David Campbell is here. Okay, go, Mr. Campbell, go ahead and let us know what your concerns are while we can still hear you. <laughs> Thank you. Let me first uh, address Mr. Manios's uh, uh, opening statements. Uh, I, I was, uh, my, my door was knocked on and uh, Mr. Calvano did hand me a package. I had not read it in any, any thoroughness at the time but I did express to him very strong concerns about the extension of the house towards the backyard and that being my principal issue. So let me get on the record that I did oppose at the time and uh, as opposed to what he said. As, he, as it relates to the 0.77 density within the initial footprint, uh, as opposed to the third floor, I think that's entirely relevant to take the entire uh, ask at 0.93 into account. When he, when he talks about the 15 inches higher than my existing roof line, I expanded our house to include a third floor within an attic-like space and did that within a 0.72 footprint because that is what I was advised is consistent not only with the character of the neighborhood, but what had previously been approved. So to try and say, well, it's only 0.77 really even though it's actually 0.93, is sort of twisting, I think, the overall impact of what the house will be. When I looked at the impact studies of the three streets, uh, our street, the street north, and street south, there is no home that was granted a 0.93 uh, at an anything close to 0.72 has been rejected. There have been two litigated fights, including on Mayfield, where there was finally a resolution um, that I believe ended up at 0.72. I am not opposed to development or building, and I would be happy to sit down with Mr. Calvano and Mr. Manios and build a house, uh, have them amend their uh, proposal to be more in character and size of houses that are in the neighborhood. Specifically, Mr. Calvano, as a, as a builder, is not a neighbor. So when we consider our renovation, we talked to our neighbors and ended up uh, cult uh, developing a house that was in character and would not impose on our neighbors. This house will be a gross imposition on our use and enjoyment of our backyard. I will have a 35 foot wall, three feet from my existing lot line, where today I have open space and I'm looking at sky, sun and trees. I will live in a canyon. This is not acceptable and not in character of the building. The way that that wall and the height of the wall come into place is by use of the variances of height in floor space. 
So again, while there is a 0.77 argument to be made, the use of the height and the floor space expand it so far back, it's halfway into my backyard, I will not have the use and enjoyment of my backyard. Further, the precedent that this sets now gives uh, the opportunity for future buyers and builders of homes to create those canyon-like uh, houses on the various streets in our street in particular. There is no house on the south side of Urbina that has a back uh, facing setback as large as what is proposed. There are issues with drainage. There are uh, streams that run under the this area. By building such a massive house and a massive footprint, he will push those streams into other people's homes. That needs to be taken into account as he knows that he has had some flooding issues. If he wishes to build a home that big, there are lots of lots in Etobicoke where houses that side could be built. We're only asking him to build a house that is in character in the size of the houses that are on the streets above and below us. 15% above the 0.6 that is required is egregious. Um, I wanted to just quickly address the property value issue. It comes from the precedent, but also the privacy, sunlight, sky, and wind that will affect our backyard okay. in such a dramatic way. Okay. Uh, I know that, I, go ahead, somebody trying to, I'm just saying we don't normally get you know property value, but I think you're making you made your point. Uh, to just to summarize, you did say that you did yours, and the applicant did mention that he's 15 inches higher than the one that you did, and you said you did yours at 0.72, and that included a third floor. Is that what you said? That's correct. Right? You're at 0.72, and, 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 and that did, includes I, a third floor. Uh, you know whether it's in the roof correct. or not in the roof. Okay, correct. and it, I did not push back at all from my existing footprint which is the biggest contention that myself, Judith and Ivan Petrov, mm. Farouk, Greg and Brent, everybody, the issue is pushing back. So using the, uh, the footprint, the, the square footage mm. to push back. Mm. The impact on everybody else's backyard and the use and enjoyment and the fact that it's gonna be 37 feet tall is just uncharacteristic of this by a magnitude of 50. Okay. It's, it's, I would be happy to discuss a way to, to come to some okay. joint agreement. Yeah. Well, this is now before us, and we, we're, so we're, we're going we're to deal with it some way or another today. So, again, there is no length or depth variance. However, like you say, it's the GFA that's it's pushing it back that no one else has pushed it back uh, into the rear yard. Correct. If it, I suppose the, okay. the variance from setback and width, if it was a one-story bungalow, would fit within the point six. Right. Okay. The point got your is, yeah. Okay. We're going to have to move on, sir, because we've got a lot of speakers and a lot of hearings today. Thank but thank you for your thank comments, you for and uh, we'll hear. I guess we'll have a chance to respond after everyone else. So, can we go back? I'd like. I'd like hearing the most directly affected neighbors. So, back to uh, number twenty-three, Verbena, Stewart uh, Hillgrove. Are we back? Uh, is Mr. Yeah, Hillgrove back with us? I'm. I am here. Do you have a second device on, sir? Because we're having an echo now. Please turn off the second device. Hello? So he did call in, but I think he hung up. Yeah, I just heard him click. Okay, so how about... Um, we heard from Brent. We heard from... Or he deferred over to the Campbells. Uh, how about John and Carol Colalillo at um, 25? Yes, I'm here. I'm Hello, here. John. How are you? Okay. Can I begin? Can you uh, let us know what your concerns are? You're one house over next door to the Hill Groves. Yes, yes, we have. And living here, my wife and I have lived here 38 years. And I just want to read a statement. I think I have the, uh, the privilege of living here so long that I just want to make an emotional statement about this situation. First of all, I totally agree with David Campbell said about the situation. And for the record, we strenuously reject the proposal to extend the backyard addition. When we stand in our backyards, we can see looking east and looking west that all the houses are more or less in line, the same length. When I stand on my front lawn, all the houses are in line. None of the properties jut out. There's a reason for this. It adds to the harmonious beauty of the street and of the community. 
why can't the same logic apply to our backyards? If you approve this backyard extension, it would set a bad precedent on our street. It will have certainly have an impact on our home. This structure will take away our privacy and adequate sunshine, thus creating an uncomfortable living condition sitting in our backyards. Look, we're not against development. When a poorly located structure then can be both physically and virtually overwhelming is not a good development and not in good taste. These are not big backyards. Good neighbors make good communities. This developer does not live here and he certainly doesn't seem to care about the people living here. In conclusion, I invite the committee members to knock on our doors and stand in our backyards and envision a monstrous wall shadowing our backyards. Verbena Avenue is a small street. There's only 28 houses with tall, mature trees on both sides. It's a beautiful street, no sidewalk, making you feel like you live in a country. As I mentioned, we lived here close to 38 years. We look forward to bring to our backyards the spring and the summer, enjoying the sunshine and our privacy. And we, would, and we still wish to grow our herbs and tomatoes in the sunshine. To deny these privileges would be heartbreaking. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kalalero. Any questions before we go on to the next speaker, who is Farouk Rashid at number 16. And again, uh, you're just echoing what other people, there's no, you don't necessarily have to make a fulsome uh, presentation. But I see you're, uh, Mr. Rashid, you're across the street. I am across the street, yes. Um, and I will defer to David Campbell. They will speak on, our, on the, for the group, I think. I don't have anything new to add. Okay, other than what the Campbells had to say. Thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, Ivan and Judith Petrov at 17. So you're uh, one house over on the other side from the Campbells. Is Ivan or Judith Petrov there? Nope. Okay, what about the hill groves? Are we back to the hill groves? And the last one is Craig Kadoki at 15 Hazelbray Road. Oh, the hill, okay. Mr. Hillgrove. Hello, Stuart Hillgrove. Yeah, we do have his letter. We have the, you know, very, uh, we have a letter uh, from him and we have a letter from uh, the Campbells. Okay. Is he there? Mr. Singh? Yes. Hello, Mr. Singh. Yes, I'm here. Okay, uh, we've been having some connectivity issues. Um, you're, the, uh, you're with the Swansea Area Ratepayers. We have your uh, letter and your general letter. Would you like, and you've, I guess you've been listening in to see what the neighbors have to say. They're concerned with the uh, GFA, which is expressed in the expanding into the rear yard, which is, uh, they're saying is not appropriate and not what everyone has been doing there. So it's out of character. Uh, do you have something to add to uh, what you've had to say in your letter? Sure, a couple of things. Um, we note that on page three, the zoning page that was submitted with these plans, it shows a total of 3,137.73 square feet for floors number one, two, and three. And that is 291 square meters. The application is for 274. I also heard the uh, agent uh, referring to a movement of the garage and that being integral. I'm not sure we're looking at the same plans anymore. Um, I have a concern that uh, the plans have been changed and that we should be given a opportunity to uh, review a new plan if it's been put forward. And so I would uh, recommend that we do um, 
uh, have an opportunity to meet with the neighbors and the developer to see what we can come up with uh, to have some mutual uh, peace here. Um, this Great Pairs has done this on many occasions and would be happy to uh, mediate that uh, discussion. Um, yeah, well, I think it's a little, that probably could have been, would have been done uh, some time before, but I guess, uh, I don't know why that didn't happen. It doesn't appear to be the best uh, consultation uh, on this application, but we're now into it and it's up to the, uh, the applicant and he, he wishes to proceed rather than uh, defer and mediate or have some sort of a uh, agreeable situation. His position is, hey, I'm at 0 0.77, the rest of it is within the roof, and we've heard from the neighbors that that is not the case, that there is issues with the how deep, uh, how back the property is going. That's correct, and they understand that the GFA is being pushed to the back, and if it could be pushed up, I think they'd be happier with that. And uh, there is some possibility to discuss, uh, you know, where that might go. Well, if he gets um, refused, then he'll have to come back with a fresh application, and uh, perhaps then he can have some uh, meaningful consultation with the neighbors that didn't take place previously. Okay, right. so in yes. Okay, so um, would you like to make any further submissions, or can we move on to the next speaker? Well, I did have a look at the list that they submitted in support of their application uh, with the different addresses. I note that most of them don't apply to the same block and under the T-Lab rules would not be admissible for uh, comparison. Um, I also want to note that 10 Armadale, which is more comparable, I know it's a bit uh, far away, but it was also turned down by the Committee of Adjustment um, uh, for uh, uh, 9.7 meters uh, height, um, Eve setback of uh, 0.12 meters, and then uh, FSI of 0.66. So um, certainly the neighbors there were upset about the uh, impact that the building was gonna have, and that was uh, also uh, turned down. So we uh, would hope that the community is going to be consistent with that. Okay, do you wanna state for the record what that address is? Because again, we don't have a map, we don't have the drawings, we don't have that application. So it's hard to sort of compare that, uh, you know, something that's, that's off the street, but we take it that, uh, you know, we look at the most, the most directly neighbor, uh, affected neighbors are on the street who are uh, very opposed to this application. So, um, thank you, sir. Can we now move on to, uh, back to Mr. Hillgrove next door, 23, Verbena? We do have his letter and perhaps we can read that in if we can't reach him, but. Well, I'm right here. Uh, awesome. Let me see if I can unmute myself. Where's on? Can you hear me? Yeah, you're perfect. Sure, sure. We can Here's hear you now. You. Just, yeah, refrain from right. muting and unmuting yourself. Okay, well, we've had a merry old time here this morning. Um, uh, I basically agree with uh, my neighbor John and my uh, neighbor David as far as I have no problem with the height of this house uh, in the application. I have a very big problem with the extension in the backyard. It will virtually take up almost half of my backyard. It will be a 33 or whatever it is tall brick wall. It'll be like living in a, next to a small apartment building. I'll have about 19 feet of viewing space in my backyard it'll take up approximately half of my backyard uh, i am opposed to this build i really sincerely hope that you will take that into consideration of our neighborhood and and us who are directly affected by this bill and i thank you very much for your time okay thanks thank you for your patience we were having there was some kind of a delay so you thought we were talking when you weren't talking but I'll just read from your letter where you state, uh, we have invested tens of thousands of dollars on the value of our home over the past 24 years, and this will negatively affect with the construction of a 16 foot by eight inch, 16 foot eight inch extension and the three story brick wall as our easterly view. This is not aesthetically pleasing. Okay, and we've heard from the neighbors on the other side as well. Any questions for Mr. Hargrove, Hillgrove or any of the other neighbors before we go back to Mr. Manios for a reply? No, okay. We so. just have one more, Craig Kadopi. Oh, uh, you're, that's right. Craig Kadopi of Hazelbray Road. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you for, uh, for having us uh, all being able to talk through the system. I know it's difficult for everybody, but, uh, but everyone's patience is, uh, is, is really uh, important. Um, I don't have a lot of new information. I would like to double down. On a couple of points and expand on them a little bit, and if you can, uh, can you just state for the record where you are in relation to the property you're behind. 
I'm just south and west okay. of, the, of the property. Um, uh, and the part of the importance of that is that, of course, although this hasn't really been made clear in this meeting yet, um, this area is on a hillside. So I'm downhill from, from this uh, address. Okay. Um, many of the people downhill, as was mentioned earlier, um, the area has lots of uh, underground streams and water issues. Um, many of the neighbors, uh, especially directly south of, of uh, 21 Verbena, have not only um, sump pumps, they have battery backed up secondary redundant sump pumps because of the amount of water. My major concern with this is that the, the lot area um, being the, 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 the reduction of the soft landscaping lot area is forcing more and more of, of any uh, precipitation rainwater to go into the storm sewers, which is already overstressed. Every time, even uh, over the weekend when we had uh, the rainstorm, the streets were flooded. There's, there's masses of water on the streets that the storm system cannot uh, handle. The system is overstressed uh, with the uh, developments that are going on up along Bloor Street uh, and everything up, uphill from us, it's getting worse. There's development south of us. That means that any of the, the stuff gets backed up from there. It's, it's a really important fundamental of keeping the neighborhood safe and also preventing uh, massive rework from the city to re place and and uh upgrade the storm system okay, yeah and it's uh, obviously not related it, just to this one one property it's just you know everything no, it's, it's not direct, it's not solely related to this one property but this one property is setting a precedence if this goes through yeah. other properties have already had this uh have had their their area increased mm -hmm. um and it's something that we've noticed in the neighborhood has become more of an issue as more houses are getting larger and using more of the lot size and where more properties are doing hard landscaping instead yes, of grass for sure. and trees. Yep. So we did a we did a renovation on our house several years ago. We didn't we tried as as a number of people have said we tried very hard to make sure that our property stayed within the look and the feel of the neighborhood because after being here for 18 years that was of of high priority for us. We yep. did not need any uh, any variances. We did not ask for any, you know, change of footprint of the house. We just added a an extra story, and we've been trying to be very clear about that. That's the the look and feel of the street is very important to everybody around here. Uh, everybody who lives in this neighborhood, I think, chose to live in this neighborhood because of the style of the houses and as as the previous um, speaker mentioned. You know, streets that are short, small streets, no sidewalks. So it makes you feel like you're in a small community. Mm -hmm. Swansea yeah. has always been been referred to as you know the last small community in the in the city. Um, you know, last the last village in the city. Um, so that to me is is the really important things. And like I said, just to reiterate, and I don't want to take more more time than than needed, but just because we've seen other properties being given some variance, uh, nothing close from what I understand to what this property is asking for, okay. which I, I, if it's not obvious yet, I highly disagree with uh, their proposal. I think that the extension, especially in the back, is going to be detrimental to the neighborhood. But just because another property or other properties in the past have been given a variance doesn't mean that we need to continue it. We need to learn from if those were mistakes, and I feel some of them were, we need to learn from that and you know, write the course of of the uh, development in this neighborhood. I don't have any okay. problem, obviously, as other callers have said. Thank you, Mr. Godot. Thank you about development in the neighborhood, but I think it has to be done respectfully and responsibly. Thank, thank you very you. much for your time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Manios. Uh, we've heard from a lot of the neighbors uh, opposed to your application here, uh, so you have uh, opportunity to reply to some of the comments, and uh, when we'll take it into committee for a decision. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll try to address all of them, but if I do miss something, Mr. Chair, please uh, feel free to nudge me into discussing it a bit further. Uh, I'm just going to start with uh, the setting of presidents, and, uh, and I think it's a bit disingenuous from the Ratepayers Association saying that there hasn't been any approvals of this nature 
when I caught up, they brought up Armadale number 67 and 73 were approved at 0 0.97 and 0 0.99. On Mayfield, the three houses number 19, 21, and 25 were approved anywhere from 0 0.9 to 1.11. On morning side, there's a ton of examples, and we provided all of those to the committee, and they were posted on the on the city website. So, I don't think we're setting any precedents here. Uh, the other other issue regarding which a few uh, neighbors have brought up is the rear addition. I'd like to bring to your attention, Mr. Chair. This is completely in compliance. We're not at the maximum length. We exceed the rear yard setback of seven seven meters to eight point seven five meters. We comply with all side yard setback. Hence, you don't see any variances related to setbacks. Actually, the setback at the back of the house increases because the lot is irregular, and we've opted to have an additional uh, setback on the west side, although we were allowed to build in line with the existing house, which is only eight inches away. We opted to set it in two feet in order to reduce uh, the massing and, and the impact on the neighbors. In regards to the height and uh, what the East neighbor has brought up that they built completely within the, the roof line of the house, I, I don't think that's correct. Because if you refer to the old uh, pictures of this house, it used to be a completely hipped house, hipped roofed house, and this was converted to an 8.95 meter high gable on the side, which is a variance that the committee had approved. We are completely containing our third floor within the roof line of the house no height, no wall height variances, no gables. It's strictly a hipped roof. Even if the third floor is removed, the depth of the house will still remain the same. Regarding the drainage issues, I'd like to bring to your attention that we're removing a large detached garage in the backyard, which was almost useless because it's very difficult to get to. Our proposed landscape, uh, soft landscaping is 85% versus the allowable 50%. And there's there's nothing to, I think it's just a number which face people, but I'd like, without sounding like a broken record, it's completely contained within the roof line. So even if that third floor was removed, we would be down to 0.77, which some people think is, is the right number. The footprint of the house will remain intact. There wouldn't be any changes to it because there are no variances related to length and setback. And yeah, sir, questions. sir, just to just to clarify and point you in the right direction, I think, you know, from we heard, I don't think the issue is the issue is the number for sure within the roof line. But the concern we heard from the neighbors is the fact that it's extending 16 as a state and Mr. Hillgrove's letter, 16 and a half, 16.8 inches or 16 feet, eight inches extension of three story brick wall. That seems to be they're saying everyone seems to have done it, even though, as I pointed out and you pointed out, there is no length or depth or rear yard setback variances here but they're saying that you're getting it in the in the fsi at uh 0.77 or 0.93 so okay so it's not I'll it's not i agree that. with you put it within the roof line and that's occasion you know, affecting the number but i think their concern as we heard is the fact that everyone on that side of the street and we've heard from all the people on the odd side uh, municipal numbers that no one has gone beyond and by you doing so you're going to you know affect that sure. complete sight line that no one else has, has okay. reached so regarding so let's concentrate the, the 16, on that issue. I'm happy to. Uh, the 16 foot eight that's been mentioned over and over again, that's the actual addition to the back. The fact that the existing house is has a very small footprint shouldn't be the reason to compare. Like the reason we have a 16 foot eight is because the existing house is very shallow. We're actually nine and a half feet further back from the west from the west neighbor. We're not 16 foot eight back from their back wall. So I think that's. You need to look at the side plan to see the impact and how this house compares to the house next door. So it's just because the existing house has a very small footprint. We're starting from small, hence the addition is 16 feet 8. Okay. So we're only three feet further back from where the west neighbor is. Okay. Keep going, please. You got to, you know, you can try to do this as soon as Bob, you're up to four and a half and, minutes. Uh, I, Sure, and the last thing I'll bring up is uh, the improvement on the eaves overhang on the west side. So we did reduce the overhang from the existing eight or ten inches to two inches. So our roof line and eaves drop are completely contained within the property. That reduces the encroachment, actually eliminates the encroachment. Okay, yeah, you mentioned that before. You mentioned that in your presentation. Now you're supposed to be commenting on what the neighbors had to say. So neighbors weren't talking about that. They're talking about the 
extension in the rear about the flooding, those type of issues. I, I, I've addressed all of those, Mr. Chair. Yeah. So if you feel there's something I need to uh, put more attention to, I'm happy to do that. But I've, yeah. I've addressed oh. the, the length of the house, the GFA, the height. And there are just on, I think one thing the Rate Pay Association had brought up is the fact that there's new plans. We've only submitted one set of plans, never changed it. Mm -hmm. The zoning review was based on these drawings that are in front of you today. The variance is 4.93, and uh, there's, I'm not sure where that's coming from. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, any questions for Mr. Manios uh, and or the neighbors? Or well, let's, if not, let's take it into committee for a decision. Thank you. Is anyone prepared to make a motion? Um, I've got concerns with the FSI and the height and the impact that that has on the neighborhood. The eaves, I addressed, uh, he's uh, meeting the existing condition, which is fine. The, the parking space, space width is not an issue, but uh, I've got issues with the FSI and height. So I'm going to move for refusal. I think the variances are not minor in nature and not uh, in keeping with the zoning bylaw OP. Okay, thank you, Mr. Palmer. Do I have a seconder for Mr. Palmer's motion? Sophia Ruddick, all in favor? Okay, the application is unanimously refused. Thank you, neighbors. Thank you, um, applicant. And please, neighbors, make sure you get a, a you fill out that form. You're going to get a copy of the decision. Okay, so we can move on then to our second application, item number two, and that is 56 the Queensway. It's an application to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. There are. Um, Hold on a second. There are seven variances. Uh, we have opposition, uh, two letters of opposition. Um, we have urban forestry looking for condition number three. Um, and we have two letters of opposition. Um, and we have one speaker, the speaker uh, Zen Menj, the, the agent, as well as uh, Mr. Singh from the Swansea Area Ratepayers Association. And that's all we have on this one. 54, we have the neighbor 54 writing in about uh, uh, the front yard landscaping, 5% deficient, and they want her, she wants her tree roots to be protected. And uh, the Swansea letter was ref seeking a def does that letter that deferred to refer to six Swansea applications. Uh, was one general letter talking about a deferral request. Uh, so perhaps uh, Mr. Singh can weigh in. Is Mr. Menjdi there, please? Zen yeah, um, okay. You're the agent? Yes. Okay, can you give us, uh, I'm not sure we need a, um, we'll have to hear what the concerns are, but um, you've seen the letter from the next door neighbor. Perhaps you'd like to respond to that. Uh, about the Fanya uh, landscaping area. Yeah, but she was just talking about the landscape. You're only 5% deficient, but she was talking about the trees. Um, we have your, we have, um, yeah, we have the opposition letters. That's all we have. We don't have any city departments other than urban forestry once uh, condition number three. So perhaps let's hear from Mr. Singh and see if what his concerns are, if it was just an issue of the deferral request or if he has any substantive issues and you can respond. Does anyone have any specific questions for um, the agent before we move on to see if the Ratepayers Association has any concerns? Uh, I just want to hear why the FSI is so high. Is that because the maybe the basement is considered ground floor or something like that? Is that why? I, I just want. To uh, it's because it's a small lot, and um, my client is uh, living with uh, his parents and. Uh, he has two children. That's why uh, we have four bedrooms uh, on the second floor. That's why uh, the FSI is so. And have there been other permissions that is around 0.73 that you're asking when 0.35 is uh, what's allowed? And a one meter has, is this, we haven't heard any anything from planning department 
um, or anything from the neighbors other than the neighbor at 54, just talking about the landscape deficiency, but um, you feel this is uh, with an in character of what's been approved in the area? Yeah, uh, we have a similar uh, proposal uh, to house next to the property, uh, 62 uh, the Queensway. 62 the Queensway. Okay, it's a few houses yeah. there. Uh, two house next to uh, 56 the Queensway. Okay, and that was similar FSI? Yeah, and similar height. Okay. Okay, let's hear from Mr. Singh then. Mr. Palmer, your question is answered. You don't have anything follow up for that. So let's hear from Mr. Singh and see if he has any concerns. Mr. Singh. Hello, yeah. Yes, Nick Singh here um, from the Swansea Area Repairs Association. Um, uh, this house uh, does have uh, variances which we believe are really out of character. If you look at the, uh, the street, it's surrounded by small houses on both sides uh, and at the rear the street behind also has some small houses on it. Um, this design simply doesn't appreciate the context in which it is in. The, yeah, Nick, uh, can you try speaking a little bit louder? I'm having trouble hearing you. I don't know about the other members or they could turn up the volume in the room here perhaps. No? Okay. Is this better? Yeah, it's better. Okay, great. Um, yeah, the, the property simply doesn't uh, respect any of the context around it, and that uh, doesn't respect the bylaws either. Um, you know, at 100% uh, over more than 100%, um, it doesn't meet any of the four tests. Uh, in Swansea, we have three basic zones for FSI. It's 0 0.35, 0 0.6, and, and 1. This application blows past the zoning for the property and right through to the next level of zoning. So it, at that at that level, it would require uh, um, uh, an application. The main design flaw seems to be the integral garage, which pushes everything up. Uh, the main floor starts at eight feet above uh, grade, got 11 foot ceilings. Uh, the second floor starts 20 feet above grade. We believe that a redesign of this this uh, building would um, improve the design. Uh, it would respect the bylaws, the official plan, the neighbor around it neighborhood around it. And uh, we believe it fails the four tests on, on several accounts. Um, as far as the, the neighbors, we haven't been able to contact the neighbors, as we said in our, our letter requesting referral. Mm, yeah. um, they may not you know, understand what, what's happened. Uh, we haven't had a chance. We've had six of these, so we haven't had an opportunity to contact them. Right, I was going to I was going to point out you didn't write a let your letter was just the deferral letter on the six applications, but there wasn't any substantive issues that you mentioned. But I guess that's because you're saying you don't have time, didn't have time to do that. Uh, and because also point out that other than the one neighbor complaining about just two small issues, um, there doesn't seem to be any neighbors or city departments or the planning department uh, crying out about this point about the FSI, when which you'll note is almost double or more than double what's permitted. So. That's a little odd, and that's why I asked the applicant, is this a typical situation for the neighborhood uh, at that FSI for a new build? Right, so, it's certainly, it's certainly, I think if you have a look at the neighborhood, yeah. you'll see that, uh, especially on this street, not many of those buildings have been um, uh, redeveloped. Mm -hmm. And on the street behind, um, I mean, uh, Ellesmere Gardens, you'll see that uh, there are some houses that have been uh, redeveloped, and right. uh, they don't have the think and uh, and size of this one. Yeah. So the you know I see it is a meter and in, in, in the rear exterior main wall is almost two meters higher than permitted. The FSI is much higher, but like I said, community planning has been silent on this. Uh, as as you know, if you see in the last application, we had sixteen people registered. In this case, there was only one letter, uh, which didn't seem to complain about the massing of the property. So I'll just I just throw that out. Um, okay, so you're saying you haven't had time, and uh, it is out of you believe it's out of character uh, in for Swansea uh, in this particular neighborhood. So um, yeah, and okay, very anyone? much out of line. Okay, so yeah. does anyone else have any questions for Mr. Singh before we go back to Mr. Menjdi? Okay, so Mr. Menjdi, uh, the uh, ratepayer representative is telling us that uh, this is out of character, although we don't have anything from community planning or any of the other neighbors complaining about the massing. Can you please respond to that concern? 
uh, about the uh, farmyard landscaping area. Um, you know, the height, the height, uh, and not the landscaping, the uh, the height and the uh, FSI. Mr. Singh from the ratepayers uh, is saying that this is. Did your clients or you talk to the neighbors about this? Because I noticed, other than the one neighbor next door, no one has weighed in on this. And I know the timelines uh, we, are short. Oh, yeah, we haven't had a chance to talk about this with the neighbor because uh, because uh, we never uh, received any uh, objection from the planner about uh, this other neighbor. Okay, so the planner didn't have any objections, so you felt you didn't have to go speak to the neighbors. So that's okay. Anyway, um, okay. So, okay. Does anyone have any questions for uh, the agent, or are we ready to uh, bring this into committee for a decision? Sorry, I just have one question. A point of clarification. You said um, sixty-two, the Queensway. What was the FSI of sixty-two? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, zero point seven. Thank you. And to clarify the height, it's uh, one meters uh, more than allowed. So it's uh, we are proposing ten meters, and uh, the allow is nine meters. Yeah, and the height for the front exterior main wall is eight point one six, where seven is permitted, and the side exterior main walls. Sorry, the rear exterior main wall height is permitted at seven. You're at eight point nine two, so that's almost two meters higher for the rear exterior main wall height. So why is that two meters higher when the other wall heights are one meter higher than what's permitted? Uh, because uh, we raised the roof, uh, so the uh, second floor ceiling can uh, flat, uh, but uh, we can uh, adjust the roof uh, lower to make. Well, it what we have is what is before us. We can start to make changes now. When you're saying you can lower it, maybe you should have already done that. But what's before it is what's before us. So you, you're right. You have a, a one meter a height variance, but on the rear exterior main wall height, it's almost two meters higher. Okay, and uh, committee members, any questions for the? Uh, there's also a height of the rear deck issue. So, uh, any any further questions, or is someone ready to, for a motion? And I think next time you know it's probably best good practice to have your consultations before the hearing and not uh, come to the hearing and say, well, we can we could lower the height. Just to clarify, Mr. Chair, sixty two the Queensway was not approved at point six point seven. It was point six seven. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Okay. Uh, is anyone ready to make a motion? I'll uh, move for approval. Uh, it meets the four tests of the Planning Act. Uh, okay, do I have someone? I'll move for approval subject to the uh, forestry condition cash in lieu of uh, three. Okay, so the, the forestry condition, thank you. Second for Mr. Palmer's motion. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Abstaining. Abstaining. Uh, what's the, because I. I Oh, because you were you missed part of the uh, yeah. presentation. I, so yeah, my understanding is I can't vote when I miss part of. The when you miss part of, because you were out of the room. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and I will. Um, I'm not. I would agree. So motion passes two to one with one abstention. Motion carries. The application is approved. Okay. Uh, so now up to item number three, 52 Beresford Avenue. This is an application to construct a new fourplex dwelling. There are eight variances. Uh, we have applicant submission. Uh, we have planning uh, comments, uh, transportation. We have uh, many letters of ob objection. Uh, we have planning recommending that we refuse variances three, four, and five, rehight. We have transportation uh, condition of approval, which to the restore a double driveway. And we, like I said, we have a lot of app, uh, uh, opposition letters and, in fact, 16 people registered with us here this afternoon, this morning, virtually to speak on this application, which is uh, an inordinate amount of comments. Obviously, this application has touched the nerve with the neighborhood. And um, 
we have, I believe the agent was um, looking at making change, but we, we cannot, first of all, yeah, just on this and any other application here before us today, as I stated at the outset, we cannot entertain changes. This is a Toronto East York application being heard by the Etobicoke York panel and any uh, deferrals will have to go back to them and we cannot make changes to these applications uh, in the event that uh, there was, uh, they're, they're looking to make um, changes to respect or uh, to address the planning uh, comments to refuse the height variances being variances three, four, and five. So let's hear from uh, the agent uh, as to what the status is of this application and whether uh, this matter can be heard today given the fact that there are some revisions to be made that the applicant wishes to make. Uh, good morning. Mrs. Evangelista, are you there? Good morning, Mr. Chair, members. Ivy Evangelista on behalf of the owner of 52 Beresford. Okay. Um, through, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I do uh, want to ask for a deferral, uh, but I, I also wanted to go on record and be known that, yes, we have made changes. Unfortunately, we were notified by planning staff November the 6th. The mission deadline was November 9th, so to turn that around was virtually impossible, but we did make changes. I did personally hand out packages to the immediate area residents to have a fulsome conversation to, as, as you know, I am willing to work with the neighbors. If they have any comments, any concerns, let's sit down at the table and let's work together. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I didn't hear from any of the neighbors. Planning staff notified me on the 6th and we tire, tire, tirelessly worked to make changes. The design of the house is totally different. I can appreciate that no changes can be made today on the floor and therefore I would like to defer and this would allow us time to now sit down with the neighbors, which I hope they're willing to do so and show them that the house that we have now redesigned now is an appearance of a two story with a mansard roof. So okay. yeah. um, through you, Mr. Chair, I believe that we should defer and uh, just to give us some time to have that conversation. Okay, so the, ch the changes were made, but you haven't, didn't have a chance because of obviously the timing deadlines. Even the letters, I see the debtors, you know, are dated, you know, the 9th, which I guess was the deadline. We do have a lot of letters, 18 letters and 15 people registered this morning to, to weigh in on this application. So uh, I'm sure the community will be happy to see you making those changes, if, you know, read through the letters, see what their concerns were. And uh, I guess this matter, uh, so we have to, we're not going to hear from everyone on the issue of the deferral request. Perhaps we can hear directly from the most uh, directly affected, uh, well, there's, you know, normally we have a spokesperson when we're in person here, but we don't have that. We have the neighbor at 50A, um, neighbor at to? 50, and the neighbor, if we have a neighbor at 54 or, anyway, uh, we can also hear from the ratepayer president who can, can perhaps, who has also weighed in on this one with a standard deferral letter, which this one will be getting a deferral, it looks like, um, and perhaps he can help in convening that, you know, a virtual meeting or something that you can uh, have community input or have this type of a meeting in the COVID world to address uh, the neighbors or perhaps funnel it through. Uh, so we'll hear from Mr. Spur Let, let's hear from Mr. Singh first then. Mr. Singh. community meetings. We uh, have done so already with a number of neighbor groups. So we'd be happy to sit down with the developer and the community and uh, come to uh, an agreement on this. Okay. So it looks like with you, you agree that this should be deferred here this after this morning. Yes, that's the acceptable. Yes. Okay. So uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, should we wait, you know, should we hear from the neighbor at 50? I don't think we have anyone at 54, so. Uh. Uh, number 50, they're, they're not speaking. They okay. did pre-register, but they advised this morning that they're not going to be speaking. So I think it's just, instead of going through, there's 16 people. Um, let's just go with the motion on the deferral. Okay, yeah, I'm so, you know, I'd, we'd like to, if you were here in person, uh, there'd be a spokesperson, everyone would be here or wouldn't be here. And, uh, but we can't have, you know, 16 people weigh in, it looks like the community uh, 
uh, it's in the best interest as reflected by the Swansea area ratepayers. And Mr. Singh has uh, graciously uh, agreed to, if necessary, Mrs. Vangelisti, you can speak to him in, uh, about convening a meeting with the affected neighbors. So, uh, committee members, on the matter of the deferral, can I get a motion to defer for consultation? I'll move to defer to continue you, conversations with neighbors. Okay, and this matter, just to clarify, will be back on the Toronto East York agenda and heard by them, unless the other divisions in the new year are going to pick up more more hearings as well. A second for the motion. Ms. Reddick, all in favor? Okay, the matter has been deferred. Okay, so just so the applicant is aware and any of the neighbors who are participating, this will be returning to the Toronto and East York panel. Um, they do have um, a bit of time to work on revisions because I believe they'll be trying to clear out any files that haven't been heard. So um, I can't speak to when they're scheduling, but it will not be soon. Okay. So uh, moving along to item number four, uh, 178... Sorarin, and this is an application to construct a new three-story rear addition and a new rear deck. There is o are only two variances, uh, one for the floor space index and one for the small one for depth. And uh, on this application, we don't have we only have the applicant registered to speak, Stephen Adio. We have supporting materials. We have uh, planning. Uh, weighing in with a condition of approval in the event of approval they would like to see screening on the third floor deck along the north and, and south edges uh, we have five letters of support and uh, as i said we have previous uh, committee decisions and supplemental materials uh, provided by the applicant mr adio yes hello okay i don't know if i pronounced that properly uh, so i just did that introduction i don't think we need a presentation for you from you there's only two variants. Just one question. Can you tell me what the current FSI is? Because you're looking to go to 0.96. Uh, Sorry, I'm using so, 98. I can't see. Uh, from 0.6, I assume you're, are you already over that? The existing home, the existing home as my, um, as the owners had purchased it, was at, um, at 0.89. Okay. That's a very important factor. So you're going yes. to go from 8, 0.89 current to 0.98, and you're, so you're 0.6 is permitted, but you're already substantially over that. So the increase is 0, 0. 0.0. Okay, very good to know. Let's see if committee members have any uh, questions for you. I guess you're okay with the planning condition being proposed? Not a problem. Okay. Committee members, any questions for the agent, or are we ready for a motion? Uh, if there are no questions, I'll move to approve. I consider the application be minor in nature, subject uh, subject to planning um, condition to have some opaque privacy screening on the uh, fencing. Okay, thank you, Ms. McCluskey. A second for that motion. Ms. Reddick, all in favor? You have your approval unanimously. Thank, thank you. you very much, committee. Thank you. Okay. Um, item number five is 63 Methuen. And this is an application for just bear with me. Okay, this is a uh, second story addition above the existing dwelling, a two story rear and front additions, a new front porch, a new rear deck, and a second story rear platform. There are four variances. Uh, we have a cover letter. We have uh, uh, opposition. Uh, we have a nine-page letter with photos from uh, the neighbor. And we have registered to speak the agent, Deborah Alexander, as well as the owner of the property, I guess, available for any questions. And we have neighbors from 74 Methuen and 68 Harshaw. And the letter, I just, just want to clarify who wrote this letter. Scrolling to the end. Um, hmm. oh, there's a petition attached to the letter actually as well with 12 signatures. I'm just trying to find out. Does anyone else can help me to see who wrote this letter? I'm just looking at the end. Doesn't appear to be a signature. 
Madam Secretary Treasurer. Oh, of uh, 63. Okay, it's 63. Oh, it's 63 is the subject properties, but who wrote the letter? The it's le a petition. Oh, it's a petition, so there is right. no author. It's just whoever. It's by all those 12 people. Okay. The, the letter now may have been understand. submitted by the neighbor at uh, 63. Uh, yeah, it looks, you know what, it's probably, the first people who signed it were 65. <laughs> Uh, so perhaps they wrote it, but it's signed by 65, two signatures, 74, 60, 57, 39, another signature from 39, 37, 64, 70, 53, and 64. So there's some numer multiple signatures, but there are 12 signatures representing a few less properties. Um, Deborah Alexander. I am here. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Deb Alexander. I'm with Alexander Planning uh, in Tottenham. I represent the owner of the property at 63 Methuen Avenue. The proposed development is an expansion of an existing one-story single detached dwelling to add a second story. To facilitate that expansion, we uh, have requested variances for front and side yard setbacks, maximum height, and SSI. The property is designated neighborhoods in the city official plan, and the city official plan contains policies related to protection of the neighborhoods. It requires that new development in neighborhoods respect the existing physical character of the area, reinforcing the stability of the neighborhood. The proposed expansion will result in a home which is similar in height, garage placement, massing, and setbacks to newer homes in this area. The official plan requires that development in established neighborhoods respect and reinforce the existing physical character of each neighborhood, more specifically, each geographic neighborhood. A geographic neighborhood is those lots that are immediately abutting, behind, and beside the subject property, as well as homes directly across the street. This property is located in a geographic neighborhood, which contains a variety of homes between one and three stories. They have peaked and flat roof architectural designs. Uh, immediately abutting to the east, we have a row of paired two-story peach roof homes. Each pair is fairly tightly spaced. To the west, we have um, one and a half story home and uh, followed by an area of one and a half to two story homes. Abutting this property to the south, we have two three-story homes with flat roof architectural designs. The proposed variance will permit the expansion of the existing home to produce a two-story home with a flat roof design. Given this context, the proposed variances maintain the general intent and purpose of the official plan. The zoning bylaw permits homes up to three stories in this neighborhood to a maximum height of 11 meters. However, in deference to the adjacent homes on the east and west, the proposed development is two stories with a proposed height of 8.83 meters. But we note that that 8.83 meter height variance that's being requested it's really a function of the roof design, not the actual height of that building, because the bylaw permits only a height of 7.2 meters for a flat roof design, but it permits a maximum height of 11 meters for a peak roof. So this is a two-story building, but the inclusion of a garage results in the need to increase the height of the building. The adjacent three-story homes to the south have similar architectural style and massing to the two-story home proposed on this property. Um, within the neighborhood of Harshaw Avenue and Methman Avenue, there are actually 10 new houses which have received minor variances for height. Those variances range from 8.54 meters right up to 11.3 meters. The proposed height of 8.83 meters is not out of character for this area. The front yard setback is generally as existing. The variance is required to allow us to fill in the front porch. The west side yard setback is as existing with a 40 centimeter bump out on the second story. That's what's triggering the need for this side yard minor variance of 10 centimeters. Um, setback at ground level actually will remain unchanged. The existing building is not parallel to the east lot line and the reduction in the east side yard setback will allow for the squaring out of the building. The proposed increase in FSI to 0.98 times lot area will permit the expansion of the existing undersized bungalow to a modern proportioned residence with a floor area of about 2,200 square feet. Within the Methwin and Harsha neighborhoods, there are now 16 new houses which have received variances for FSI. Those variances range from 0.61 up to 1.2. The massing of the proposed expansion... Sorry, is that 1.02 or 1.2? Sorry? Back up. Is that 1.2? Uh, 1. 1. 1.2. 1. 1. Okay. So 0. 0.61 to 1.2. 
The massing of the proposed expansion is similar to the massing of the homes immediately behind and abutting this property at 62 and 62B Harshaw. Those have FSI of 1.0 and 1.02 respectively. So this proposed FSI is also not out of character with this geographic neighborhood. The review of variances granted in the surrounding neighborhood demonstrates that the proposed development is not out of keeping with the character of this area and it maintains the general intent and purpose of the bylaw and is minor in the context of both the surrounding geographic and the larger neighborhood. The existing lot is fairly deep. The proposed addition uses only a small portion of the depth of the lot. Um, it's placed such that we have 25 feet of clear open space in the rear yard that will avoid significant impacts on the neighboring yards. And I note that we did not require any kind of rear yard setback variance. So these proposed minor variances are desirable and appropriate in this neighborhood context. Uh, the resulting new home will complement the existing streetscape. It will provide more energy efficient housing in a modern proportion, and it will meet the needs of modern families. So the requested variances, in my opinion, satisfy the four tests of a minor variance. We know that forestry has no concerns with the site plan and that we have demonstrated that the development is occurring outside of the root zone of all neighboring trees. We also know that the proposed rear yard setback is as permitted in the zoning, no relief required. We're aware that a number of residents have signed a petition regarding the request of variances and that the neighbors are concerned with all the variances that have been requested with the exception of the requested front yard setback. The owner undertook various discussions with the neighbors on either side and across the street. The discussions occurred both before and after the application was made. The owner advises that in his discussions before finalizing his drawings and making his submission, each of the neighbors advised that they had no concerns with the plans as drawn. Um, additional discussions have been undertaken since the petition was submitted. The owner did offer a compromise to reduce the height to 8.53 meters uh, and to remove the second floor bump out. So that would have removed the need for the 10.10 side yard setback variance. However, to date, the owner has not been able to reach an agreement with the neighbors. Okay. So the request of Please wrap up because you're uh, at six yep, minutes, I'm please. Thank right you. Right now. Yep. The requested variance are minor in the context of the geographic and the larger neighborhood and are appropriate for the committee to approve at this time. And thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Alexander, for that presentation. Any questions before we move on to the uh, hear from the neighbors? No? Okay. First neighbor uh, is the Zupan 6 at 63 Methune, right next door. Sorry, that's no, that's the neighbor, that's the applicant. Okay, they're just standing by, sorry. So the first speaker is 68 Harshaw below, behind, and I think we heard from the applicant telling us something about what the FSI is, so we perhaps should get that confirmed what their, what their FSI is. So is Sharon Boy or Joseph Rampersad sorry, gonna be Mr. speaking? Sorry, Mr. Chair, uh, the Zupanjic, it was a typo, they're located at 65. 65 Harshaw? 65. Okay. I am at 65 Methuen next door to 63. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you're next door. Yes, you're not. And I, sub I submitted a letter, and by now I collected five more signatures. And uh, yes, I'd like that to be brought Right, up. so you so were the we author of the letter that uh, that I referred to, the nine-page letter with all yes, the signatures. Yes, but I collaborated. Yes. I collaborated with other neighbors. No, I understand, and, yeah. So you had yes, help. So you held, You had helped putting this letter together. Yes, and okay. also some expert advice. And, and they obviously uh, signed it. Obviously, it's been signed by uh, twelve people, a few less households, and some people signed twice. Yes. Two signatures, but it's you have twelve signatures, and we have the letter. Uh, very and comprehensive. I have, so, would you like to just give us some? Uh, you, we have your letter. We've read your letter. Uh, but if you'd like to make a presentation, let us know what your major concerns are. As the applicant said, you, you, you objected to everything. So maybe let us know what your main concerns are with this application. So uh, I have to say that we didn't know enough about this whole process and wish we were better prepared and more involved in the consultation prior to this phase. Uh, what the, the, the applicant considers a consultation, we didn't understand it that way. We thought we were just told what the plans are. And uh, I also feel slightly disadvantaged by the rules of virtual hearings and deadlines for submissions. But uh, even though the owner of 63 Metune visited us just before submitting the plans, we started learning about the details of the proposed development and our op options after receiving the notice of the CIA, which pointed to all the documents at the application information center. Mm -hmm. We consulted with many neighbors and realized that it, there is a lot of resentment towards the newly built 
tall houses replacing bungalows in this area, but many people felt helpless and discouraged from expressing their views due to the power of precedent. Mm -hmm. I was surprised when I read the claim in the application's cover letter that our neighborhood is dominated by large two-story homes and that the proposed modern dwelling is supposed to fit perfectly in it. So I felt that someone has to inform this committee of the real situation. And if you can bring up the images in, in our letter of objection, it shows that this end of Methuen Avenue is dominated by small 1.5 and two-story homes, some of them close to 100 years old. That's why the proposed development would not really fit into the existing character. And when walking through our neighborhood, it is very easy to guess which homes were renovated by the occupying owners and which ones were done by builders for resale. So as an example of what would fit better, in the first image on the far right, we can see 62 Methuen Avenue, which is about the same height as the neighborhood buildings. The proposed variances to the zoning bylaw in this application did not seem minor to us. The fact that they are referred to as such is not easy to understand and it's dismissive. And we don't feel that they passed the four, four test, which is explained in the letter. So the proposed floor space index of 0 0.98 uh, is, 2.45 times higher than what is prescribed by the zoning bylaw, which is the current index of 0 0.4. In the immediate vicinity on Methuen Avenue, there are no precedents allowing such a high index and maximum to our knowledge is around 0.75. Allowing an FSI higher than that would have negative consequences. And I don't know if you want me to list them all because they're all in, in the letter and yeah. it's, yeah. Uh, it creates a precedent, so the more, more dwellings of this size would be built in the future and uh, change the urbanistic appearance and, and the experience of neighboring households. It, it would reduce green space, not only for this property, but also for future developments and reduce light, light exposure, increase risk from flooding and storm water management problems. And, uh, there's others creating wind tunnel affecting birds nesting because there's a tree to be taken down to uh, enable the, the expansion into the backyard uh, blocking the sun for landscaping as well as for urban food growing and we said we would accept the the second variance the third one <clears throat> uh, i must say that i didn't understand this whole process and when the agent approached us to uh, accept this uh, revision of the side yard setback variance from 0 0.1 to back to 0 0.51, the, exi the existing. Uh, we felt that this has to go through the committee, that uh, we cannot take the, just the word for it. And uh, I'm not sure if it's possible at this point to accept it. Uh, <clears throat> regarding the uh, the height of 8.83 meter, the next image in our ladder is showing how the proposed addition would compare to the neighboring dwellings on the south side of Methuen Avenue. And it's just an illustration. Uh, again, based on the recent talks, the applicant was willing to reduce the height by 30 centimeters to 8.53. This will still be about two meters higher than the surrounding dwellings, averaging 6.5 meters to our knowledge, and by 1.3 meters higher than what is allowed. We feel that removing the garage from the proposal would solve many problems, including height, loss of green space, and a possible future tree on the front lawn, and loss of street parking, which is a topic that's uh, upsetting for many of the neighbors on the street. So rather than minor, we, we feel that the requested variances on the surrounding properties and the entire community create significant impact, and uh, they include changing the prevailing pattern of the streetscape and backyards, heritage consideration as houses are older than on Bobby Point, availability of street parking, the access to the proposed integrated garage will take away a hard to get parking spot from residents who have been paying Ms. for Panic, waiting. Mrs. Panic, can you please uh, try to wrap up? You're over five minutes. Yeah, okay, so I just wanted to show you the pictures in this, in this document to yep. the, uh, illustrate, if you can go to the last two ones, to illustrate how the combination of, uh, so the, the previous, yes, that one, this one is illustrating approximately how the addition of the, uh, the, the combination of depth and height will affect the, the loss of uh, line of sight and sunlight and, and the green space. And on top of that is addition of a deck that will invade our privacy. 
and this is a, a view from our side uh, window that's on a pump out that was not a, was reflected in the plans and uh, <clears throat> that that whole view will be covered by and you can see as far as you can see there's there's a landscaping there's no buildings that go deeper into the backyards and the not just affecting us personally with the loss of light and heat this this affects uh, the entire neighborhood yeah, please wrap up please thank you and uh, so um yes so <laughs> in conclusion we understand that this bungalow has to be renovated and made functional but we feel that it can be done in a more sensitive and light way we ask that you consider the impact of long term to long term residents of McEwen who live in modest homes and to protect the environment and green space to save the parking spot, which uh, our current residents pay for, and to do so would give preference to a new development over the existing community. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions for the speaker? Nataza Zupanik, uh, just to clarify, she's at 65 right next door, 65 Mithune. And if not, we'll move over. The next speaker is Sharon Boy and or Joseph Rampersad at 68 Harsha. And they're located behind. Yes, we are. Um, this is Sharon Boy. I'll be speaking. My husband, Joseph Rampersad, is on the call, but he'll be listening. Okay. Um, I've been a resident of Harsha Avenue nearing 19 years. Along with neighbors unable to attend, we feel the proposed development at 63 Methuen has variances to the bylaws for height, setback, and depth that are not minor in nature. They're not in keeping with the prevailing character, as Nataja just pointed out and showed you in pictures, and do not follow the general intent and purpose of the official plan or priorities. Um, the proposal cites precedent and a so-called development trend in the neighborhood and refers to structures on Harshaw Avenue as reference. They are pictured in the proposal. This is not a natural trend within the nature, within the neighborhood, sorry. These are not upgrades or improvements by existing residents. As Natasha pointed out, those have been largely in keeping with the nature uh, and the prevailing characteristics of the neighborhood. The developments of this nature in this neighborhood were approved despite significant opposition by residents and continue by developers as in 63 Methuen without consideration for impact to those of us living here. I've attended the earliest of Committee of Adjustment applications for the area and residents' concerns were dismissed prior to any precedent being set. So to use this as precedent is misleading and will continue to adversely impact the stability and character of a great neighborhood. The requirement to notify only the homes in the immediate vicinity for applications for variances keeps the neighborhood residents at a disadvantage as we are not aware of major changes and impacts until it's too late. This works in favor of developers, not the neighborhood. And I would point out that this is a developer doing the work at 63 Methuen. And is another reason not to consider this trend as character for the neighborhood. Most redevelopments in this neighborhood have been proposed without real consultation with residents. The chair asks whether developers have spoken to neighbors. However, in our experience, developers verbally agree to work with neighbors on modifications as instructed by the Committee of Adjustment. But once overall plans are approved, they do not honor those agreements. They have not on our street and they have proceeded at will numerous times, including the structures that were referenced by the um, agent are well beyond the approved variances. And the city has not made any repercussions or corrections to them. So I do not feel that this should be used as precedent. Okay. At point nine eight, it's the area of the lot. Sorry, I'm, I have a limited time. I just want to yeah. get through it. <laughs> At 0 0.89, uh, 98 times the area of the lot and at 8.83 meters with the rear deck and removal of a so-called not significant tree would greatly impact the privacy of those around the unit. 63 Methuen would dwarf, shadow and encroach on privacy of neighboring properties, blocking views and light, diminishing perceived value and privacy for neighbors beside and behind 63 Methuen. The objection submitted shows the rear view of those two large structures. So you have the photos of those and the um, proposal shows the front of these homes. It clearly does not fit the character of the neighborhood. And we are their neighbors. I live at 68. Our house is exactly the same style as those pictured on page three of the objection. And as a result of this being approved and set as precedent, we now face a three-story wall of corrugated steel that is the length of the lot. 
So for the agent to say that there's 25 feet space, I do not believe that there will be that space. And it does not allow for any sight lines. We had a view similar to Natasia both before these buildings were built. We have lost sunlight. It doesn't appear until later in the day now. We face a three-story wall. And in the heat of summer, those west-facing walls reflect and radiate heat. So the impacts to the environment are also increased, including the runoff that is created. Any privacy we previously enjoyed in our backyard has been eliminated. There's a Juliet balcony on the west side of the house and a large third story deck on the rear of the building. These houses have large driveways. They have virtually no permeable space on the lot. Parking has been eliminated across 50 street feet of the street because of these neighboring units. This used to be one single residence. And in addition to the rain runoff in winter, the properties shovel their snow onto the street because they don't have place to put the snow because there's so little space. The proposal states that this bungalow is the only home of this type in the immediate vicinity and that the proposed development is in keeping with similar redevelopment trends in the neighborhood and reflects the evolving character of this area. In fact, the homes are predominantly quite modest as shown in the pictures. And that is the prevailing character of the properties and the neighborhood. These large developments do not support the stability or the prevailing character. We are not opposed to the development or renewal, as others have said. There are redevelopments on our streets where efforts were made to preserve trees. The footprint is more in keeping with prevailing character. They have parking pads, which are in keeping with the street scape and do not push the height of the structure up or back. These large structures are counter to the city plan. They reduce parking for other residents. They increase runoff of stormwater. They create a greater carbon carbon footprint and reduce the tree canopy. And this is out of the Toronto official plan 2-2. Um, the city staff, when I have inquired about some of the things that have been happening due to these developments, have advised me that sidewalk cuts do not have specific width guidelines. They are made simply according to the width of the garage built. So if you use the example in the uh, proposal, there are wide cuts that are made and it's decided by the developer how wide those are. Um, a parking pad could be used as that would be able to be done off of the mutual driveway. It would require um, applications, but it would avoid a number of the issues uh, for that one. But I think the biggest one we want to put forward that these variances yeah, are Can you please working. wrap up? Yes, okay. I am. Okay, thank you. The proposal is not in keeping with the prevailing character. This type of redevelopment negatively impacts everything, <laughs> the tree canopy, our privacy, we will be backed on. Now we will have another balcony that overlooks our yard. And Natasia and her neighbors will be shadowed by this building. And I tell you that from my own personal experience. Neighbors are actually afraid to come forward. The developers have taken have tried to take control of this neighborhood. And in the past, the Committee of Adjustment has not heard the concerns. So this should not be used as precedent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Boyk. Um, just to clarify one question. I believe the applicant said in her presentation she indicated what your FSI is. It's 68, but I didn't get it. But can you do you know what your FSI is on your house? My FSI? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not an agent. I'm a homeowner. I don't know what FSI. Is. Oh, the uh, floor space index. The you know the uh, comparable uh, variance here that we have to 0.98 from 0.4. I believe she said oh, that you were in the nines as well. Mm -hmm. No, Perhaps we can all. have her clarify that in her uh, rebuttal. Yes. But, um, yes. I thought she said we either. Are well. So as far as you know, so you, your house and you, some of your neighbors are below or, or they're not as large? No, they're not. These houses have kind of gone up over the last probably eight to ten years. They have been sporadic through the neighborhood as developers can get their hands on them. And I have had numerous neighbors. Our neighborhood, our street is very tightly knit. Mm -hmm. And people have had views of parks cut off because there's suddenly a wall to the back of the lot. They are mostly set forward on the lots and there is quite a bit of backyard space. We would be under 50% of our lot would be our house. Our lot is, um, I think, 96 feet deep by 20 feet, 25 feet wide. We have a 1.75 um, uh, story home. And it is okay. less than half. Okay, thanks. Does anyone else have any questions for uh, Ms. Boy? Or the, can we go uh, back to the... Uh, oh, we have one more speaker, Glenn McKay at 74 Methune. So no one has any questions? Hi, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, 
<laughs> still morning <laughs> Thank for a few you for more minutes. It's the afternoon, it's still the morning. My apologies. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. I, the points by Sharon and the task have already been brought up. Those points are obviously about its size, its consideration, the fitting of the neighborhood. Um, I live across the street and about three houses down, so I'm not directly in, impacted uh, by a visual or sunlight or any of those matters. Uh, however, I am on here to talk about obviously the precedent that's being set. In fairness, my one and a half story home is 1,100 square feet. And that's very typical for this end of the street. Okay. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a lead in fairness to talk about how when they're doing the assessment of the property, they talked about large two-story homes. This is not a large two-story home street. It might be neighborhood, but not street. Um, so really the, the issue is, uh, you know, this is a teardown. This is not a minor variance. This house will be, you know, torn down within the roots and a new structure will be built. The garage up front obviously makes this a two and a half story plus. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, this is, I, I don't know if the developer is trying to overreach with the idea of, of a bit of a fallback, but this is something that will clearly stand out, uh, a monolith amongst amongst our homes. Okay. Right? So um, I, I'll keep it brief. That, that Really, that's my, my only point. Everything else has been said correctly and, <laughs> and with due diligence. So I appreciate okay. your time. Great. Thank you, Mr. McCain. My, my thank you very much for doing what I was suggested at the outset for other speakers to just hone in and, and focus in on something that hasn't been mentioned. And we don't need to have this, you know, same fulsome presentation that we had here from uh, for, from a third speaker. So, um, uh, my Ms. pleasure. Yeah, let's go back to Deborah Alexander. Can you please re respond to the uh, neighbors' uh, comments? And can you just re re restate for me? I think you said in your presentation you mentioned some of the houses on Harshaw, and I thought you said 68 had a pretty high FSI. Maybe I'm mistaken. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. The house that I reference is the ones that abut immediately to the south. So they actually touch the backyard of this house. And those are 62A and 62B. Um, I believe the street numbers now are 62 and 64 Harsha. Um, in addition, 69 Harsha. So let me just run through some of the numbers that I'm getting from my minor variance research. Um, 62A and B Harsha were the ones I mentioned, 1.02 and 1.0. 1 69 Harsha is 0 0.87. 71 Harsha, 0 0.95. Coming back to Methwin. Did you have any uh, in Methuen? Yeah. Methuen, sorry. Uh, 19 is uh, 1.12. 29 is 0 0.97. Okay, those are, those are pretty uh, far away, right? 29 to 63? And any yeah, closer to the yeah yeah 44 is 0.99 and 81 is 0.87 okay so uh, sorry for interrupting to clarify so now can you respond to the concerns of the neighbors you have five um, minutes a couple of things the yeah um the the pic i just wanted to mention that the picture that was um shown in the petition with the the box the orange the blue box and then the one from the rear yard that was in color and sepia those aren't actually accurate when i asked my architect to take a look at them he said that they were exaggerated but unfortunately he didn't have um time to put something together and get it into you in order for you to see the actual streetscape and what it would look like so um all i can tell you is that that actually wasn't accurate um and in the petition itself she mentioned that she's just kind of putting that together to give a bit of an idea but yeah, my architect measured it. He says it's not right. Um, so with regard to the the, no, the removal of no significant trees, the, I I stand by that. The site plan shows we're outside of the root zone. There's one small tree, a private tree on this property. It has a 15 centimeter trunk. It's quite small. Um, that one will be removed for the back corner of the house. Um, the let's see the two and a half meter wide garage door that we're showing on this is actually only one car width. So we're taking parking for one car with one driveway. It's not a big wide double driveway. It's not anything like that. It's just parking for one car. Um, and in terms of the privacy issues, um, as I mentioned previously, this house actually doesn't go out into the rear yard by a significant number. Um, it's going out by, I think, uh, three or four meters. Let me just get the site plan up again. Going back by... And we don't need a rear variance anyway, but um, yeah, it's going back by about three and a half meters beyond what's already there, the existing rear wall of the house. Okay, but so I'm that, sorry, I'm looking at the keeping... sur either the survey or the survey shows your lot and the law house next door at 61. Okay, let me grab the 
survey. And it shows that you're on? already further back, and then you're going back again. Another like doubling in how far you are beyond 61 now, and again that's say one story. Now you're going to go two story. So I think is that a pro <laughs> the proper depiction? I'd just look, like to see if that's the proper drawing. Um, it's basically the survey dated February 22, 2020. Yep, that's right. Okay, okay. So, so that's a fair that depiction survey, of what's yeah. what you're doing, right? Uh, that survey is showing what is there now. So that survey was created with the existing house. You can see the existing rear wall, um, and that's actually existing. Where it so says addition, that's going, existing. Yeah. So, so this you can see where the neighbor's deck is um, on the the left of the survey. That deck is about reaching about halfway through um, our new addition. So yeah, the, that's the neighbor's sixty-five. The yeah. Yeah. We yeah. don't see the so full the sixty-five. House we see sixty-one. Has a, okay, I'm looking at sixty-five on the left side of that survey that you pulled up, and you can see there's a house, oh. the one and a half story oh, house. Oh, now I see deck. it just came up. It wasn't Look showing in my picture. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that, that deck is there, and that addition that's shown is actually an existing two and a half meter addition. Um, this new addition to the back is another three meters or so. Okay. So for comparison's sake, if you look at the neighbor's deck, we're going past that deck by about, ballpark you here, by about a meter and a half. Okay, that's helpful to know. Yeah. And are you going to have a deck as well? Um, a really small, just a little planter box. Mm -hmm. uh, it okay. only sticks out by, let's see, that two meters deep. And so you would so agree then if you compare one. it to the neighbor at 61, it goes oh, much, much, much. It's already significantly beyond now as, as built. The one on that's, the a two story, that's a yeah. two-story home on the other side. 61. Those are okay. the large, yeah, those are all large brick two stories, very square, and there's a whole row of them along that side. Those are the larger homes that I was that I was thinking of when I was looking at the streetscape, because they do have quite a large massing and presence on the street, just because of the style of their architecture. You mean 61 and 59, the ones on that side? But they, yeah, go, they do, hardly, yeah. they don't go back any anywhere near as far as no, your house no, this purports is strictly to street. Is any, um, just follow up some final comments, please. Um, reply to yeah, again what I, they I had think, to say. Um, I, I think that uh, I think the owners have done a lot of work to try and accommodate the neighbors on this. Um, it's unfortunate that they didn't bring their concerns more to light during his initial discussions with them before he finalized all of these plans. Um, as I say, he did make a couple of offers to reduce the height slightly to take away the bump out, but we never did get a response from the neighbors for that. So um, I, I can't even withdraw that variance for you because we got no response from anybody, unfortunately. Okay. So now and again, after talking about the survey, we then go to the next drawing, which shows the in, in blue, uh, the one-story brick building and the addition, and then we show crosshatch what you're seeking to add. Correct. Right? Okay, but that one doesn't quite show. Yeah, it does show the other properties. So that's the that's yeah, a really good one to look at. Okay, committee members. So uh, that's I guess the the plan. It's up on the screen now. Um, any for the follow up questions, either for Ms. Alexander or for any of the neighbors, for that matter, or are we ready for a motion? Um, having reviewed this, I don't think the variances requested are minor in nature. They're uh, incompatible with the neighborhood, uh, or they're, they're creating a house that's incompatible with the neighborhood. So I'm going to move for a refusal. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Do I have a seconder for Mr. Palmer's motion? Ms. McCluskey? All in favor? The application has been unanimously refused. Thank you, uh, Ms. Alexander. Thank you to the neighbors. Okay, and we have to move on now to item number six.
It's now uh, quarter to 12. Uh, we're behind schedule, so we're going to try to make up some time here. Item number 6, 1548 Queen Street West. And uh, we only have one speaker, Anna Romanov, the agent on this application. It's an application to um, construct a two-story addition above the existing building to add two additional offices and residential, two additional office and residential units to the existing multi-use building. There are three variances. Um, and uh, perhaps we can, we have, um, we have no comments from anyone uh, on this. We don't have any city departments weighing in with comments or neighbors. Um, is Anna Romanov there? It's uh, John Romanov, Anna's partner. Anna was uh, not available today. Okay, welcome. Uh, very straightforward application. I see you're just a parking deficiency in the FSI of 1.18 times coverage, where one times the lot is permitted. Can you just let us know what the existing FSI is? Um, I believe the existing FSI is around one, but if I could just uh, clarify. So the FSI overall that's allowed on the site is 2.5, being a combination of residential and uh, commercial. Okay. So we're, we're looking, the variance that we're looking at doesn't really push us over the total FSI. It's just the separation of the commercial and residential right now allows two times residential as a maximum and one times commercial. Okay. So we're basically offsetting the commercial against a reduction in the residential. I see. So it says um, the, the maximum permitted commercial floor space index is one times. That's correct. And then it says the, the overall altered commercial building. It should really say commercial floor space or whatever. Correct. Well, yes. I guess it's yes. Right. But yes. there is an addition to that residential mm -hmm. floor space. Yes, we're, we're adding one more suite into the building. We currently have uh, one residential unit and commercial, the ground floor. Um, we're adding one more residential suite and then office at the second floor. So the office at the second floor, the owner of the building um, operates the uh, retail unit on the ground floor, um, and she felt a need for some office space in the area as well as residential. Okay. So let's see if committee members have any questions for you or if someone's ready to bring a motion. Uh, I'll move to approve if there's no questions. Um, consider this to be desirable and appropriate and meets the four tests. Thank you, Ms. McCloskey. A seconder for that motion. Ms. Reddick, all in favor? You have unanimous approval. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item number seven, uh, which is three Pasadena Gardens. And this is an application for... Uh, a new deck and perg along the north side of the building. There are four variances. Uh, TRCA has no objection, uh, but advises the permit is still required prior to the issuance of building permit. And we have 10 letters of support. Nothing else on file uh, on that. And before us, we have uh, Victoria uh, Zam Zaremba the, uh, of three Pasadena Gardens, as well as a neighbor uh, in support, David Taylor from 13 Sidford. So, um, Victoria Zaremba, are you there with us? Yes, Mr. Chair, Victoria Zaremba from 3 Pasadena Garden speaking. Okay, so urban forestry is requesting condition number one. TRC has no objection. Um, committee members, I don't think we need a presentation. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant? Okay, uh, do Mr. is David Taylor with us in support? He's behind the property. Paul? So I think uh, Mr. Taylor is in reference to a different application. Oh, okay. Thanks for letting us know. Okay, it's a reference to Sid. Is that an error? Is David Taylor from 13 Sidford on another application? Okay. He's on the line. Okay. What application is that for? The other one passed. Yes, it's nine. He may be here in the other one. It should have been on the other one where we have a lot of speakers. So I assume he's on the other application. Okay, so let's. Um, so, in this, does anyone have any questions for the agent or the, uh, uh, not the agent, the uh, homeowner? Uh, or are we ready for a motion? Uh, 
I'm prepared to move for a motion in this matter. I find that the application is minor in nature. It's um, consistent with the intent and principles of the um, zoning bylaws and the Planning Act, and it's desirable for the use of the land, that for the use of the land, sorry, and I, I, I move that we approve this application. With no conditions. With, with the conditions from um, forestry, number one. Yes. And it's okay. a, there's no conditions. From yep. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion for approval with the urban forestry conditions. Second for that motion. Mr. Palmer, all in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you. Okay, our next Thank you very much. Okay, our next application is item number 8, 80, in, in, 80 Indian Grove. Uh, this is an application uh, for a new fourplex and a new detached garage. There are uh, 10 variances. Um, we have uh, opposition, um, and yes, and we have planning requesting a deferral to address the planning concerns. We have uh, before us, so we have Mr. A Chair, of people um, speaker. So perhaps we need to hear from the applicant uh, on the issue of the planning request for a deferral. Hi, Agent uh, is Robert, Robert McCatchy. McCatchy. Yes, sir. Uh, I, we are deferring. Okay, you're 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 you've seen community planning's request, and you're you agree with their request that this matter should be deferred. Is that correct? We do agree. Yes. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of opposition. I don't know if you're. Uh, going to make be making changes to perhaps somehow convene with these people. There's 14 letters of opposition, and there are one, two, three, four people on the line who wish to address this application. Um, so you're you're in favor of the you've read the planning report and their request for a deferral, and you're uh, you're in agreement. Correct. So I don't yes, have to go into the other comments on this application. Um, Madam Secretary, should we hear from the neighbors on the issue of the deferral? I guess planning has asked for it. It's in their staff report dated uh, uh, November the 10th. Uh, they're asking for it to be deferred uh, in order uh, because they have concerns with the proposed building type, massing of the proposed building, and the type of the rear ancillary structure. And deferring will allow the applicant to address the concerns and put forth a proposal that reflects and reinforces the official plan. Uh, rather than, let's say, a refusal, they'd have to come back, make a new fresh application, pay another fee. So uh, you're agreeing that this be deferred for that purpose. So we have four people here um, who... Um, not all of them are on the line. They're not all on the line. Perhaps we can hear just from uh, 86 Indian Grove is, I guess, a few doors away. Ashley or Dave Wiley. Perhaps on the issue of deferral, we can just hear from one neighbor if they're on the line. Ashley Wiley speaking. Uh, welcome. Uh, so, wait. Thank you. I'll make it brief. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. ahead. Make it brief. <laughs> um, we're at 86, which is actually immediately next door. There's no 84 or 82. Okay. So you're the right um, person so to regarding... ask to. <laughs> thank you. Um, just regarding the deferral, I do have concerns. Um, in the email on file from Mr. McCatchy, requesting to defer he stated that the drawings would be revised only to address the concerns he discussed with the representative from community planning so there was specifically no mention of the multitude of concerns raised by ourselves and our neighbors so i'm curious as to what well he has he has those you know serves. the advantage of deferral is he has all those concerns he has the planning report which talks about you know everything they mentioned the uh, the size of the rear ancillary structure, the building type, the massing, that means like a fourplex, I don't know, a massing of the proposed building. And so mm -hmm. with all of those concerns, I would, I wouldn't, I would agree that, uh, that the applicant should be reading over the letters of opposition very carefully and coming up with his revision and perhaps sure. having some and consultation so you don't get, suddenly get a notice and have three days to respond, which is unfortunately how it is these days. So 
given that he's being well and to be fair that um they did state in that letter that no neighbors attended a meeting which was scheduled for november 11th they made that request on november the 10th yeah. so if this is how they intend to proceed yeah. i don't see how community cooperation um will be effectively sought mm -hmm. okay well you'll have a chance to come back here and advise the committee or this is probably go back downtown to toronto east york how what the process was so keep notes on what what they do do um, and I see there are you know quite a number of neighbors here who are you know sort of outraged by what's going on here so they have they can read what the what the concerns are of the neighbors and then it's up to him Thank and his you, option Jeff. to come back and he can take into consideration or he doesn't it's a free country and he can make do what he wants he can make changes he doesn't have to make changes at his peril so he has all those letters that he can read at his le leisure okay so thank I've, you i'm pro i'm not going to weigh in with the other neighbors you're the most directly affected next door you're in favor of the deferral hopefully it will have some benefit in the applicant revising to come up with something that's acceptable okay so committee members uh, on the issue of the deferral can i get a motion to defer this uh, application for revision as suggested by community planning and agreed to i'll move to defer Okay, thank you, Ms. Mulesky. All, uh, seconded by Ms. Uh, Reddick. All in favor? Okay, the matter is deferred. Michael, I'm just going to run to the washroom. Okay. Uh, should we keep going, I guess, if we can go in with the three of us on this application because we're behind schedule? Yeah, item number nine. So it should be... Madam Secretary Treasurer, a five-minute break. We okay, let's get rid of item, item 18. That's that one. one's being deferred automatically. Okay, it's being deferred and no one's appearing. So item number 18, could I get a motion to defer? And the purpose of deferral, Madam Secretary Treasurer, is? Um, I believe there was a revision submitted and it's already been rescheduled for December 10th at the Toronto and East York panel. Okay. Motion to defer. Motion to defer, item 19. That's 1574 King Street West. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Reddick. And that's to defer it to December 10th back down at Toronto East York. Is it 19 or 18? 18. 18. 18, sorry. Motion to defer number 18, 52 oh, Wright Avenue. Right, okay. Second, good cash. All in favor? Okay, it matters deferred. Okay, and we'll have a, we'll return at 5 after after 12. Uh, with item number 9. Okay. Oh, there's no point because I don't want to get it in before the lunch break because then I have to drink it fast and I don't want like yeah well
back on. Okay. Um, welcome back. Uh, it's now 10 after 12, and we're going to, uh, we're at item number 9, 41 Pasadena Gardens. This is an application to construct a two-story side addition with an attached garage and a new front porch. There are three variances. Uh, and um, we have on this application uh, a cover letter with precedence. We have 12 support, and we have opposition letter from uh, Jack Massey uh, at 34 Sun Valley Drive, and as well, 14 Sidford next door. So um, we have on this application, yeah, 12 support and um, several opposition letters. Looks like four. Um, the agent is Jay Smith, so perhaps we'll hear from Mr. Smith first. Mr. Smith? Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, the project, as you mentioned, is for a proposed two-story side addition. Uh, the current home face is Pasadena Gardens. Uh, it's a semi-detached dwelling. Uh, the area that the addition is being placed is generally being bordered by side yards. And it is a, a unique condition. The yes. owners are requesting variance. The owners are requesting variances for the side and rear yard setbacks as well as the building length. Uh, the side yard and building length proposed are in keeping with recent decisions within 500 meters of the home, and I believe are minor in nature as per the submitted cover letter. The shape of the lot and the current location and direction of the house make the rear yard more consistent with a side yard condition. Yeah. Okay. The frontage of the home is on Pasadena Gardens, making the area to the southeast the side of the dwelling, even through, even though the, for zoning purposes, this is clar classified as a rear yard. Given that condition, I feel that the proposed uh, setback of 1.39 becomes minor in nature, as if it was a side yard condition, uh, it would be very minor. Uh, the area currently has a shed and parking area and doesn't function as a typical rear yard, as per those photos submitted. The triangular nature of the lot limits the area that can be developed. Uh, an extension to the front towards Pasadena Gardens or to the northeast side of the dwelling would push it into the required front yard setback and would move the mass into the streetscape, as well as require more variances than the current addition that is proposed. The area was chosen to limit the impact of the addition on the neighboring properties. The design would have included, the design could have included a third floor with a reduced rear yard setback. It would have created more shadowing and overlook as well as an increase in the massing of the home. We have kept the proposed height to 7.7 .7 meters, which is significantly below the allowable 11.0 meters. Uh, the FSI of the home proposed is uh, 0.58, which is below the allowable 0.60. Uh, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, was there, con I'm just looking one of the letters from the uh, neighbor, 43 Pasadena, was talking about, was there a consultation? Because I take it it is a bit of a wonky lot and uh, in terms of how it's, how it's done. And like you mentioned, you could have gone higher, you could have done other things. Was there, in, was there no consultation with the neighbors before we go there on? There was. The, the, owners, the owners have spoken uh, to multiple neighbors, including to the point where one of the neighbors uh, is here to speak in favor of the project yeah. today. Uh, yeah, I another do neighbor... Yeah, I do see you do have late neighbors in support. You have petition and support. So there are yeah. people that are uh, in favor and people that are opposed. Yes, and even up to last night, uh, the owners were discussing with the owner at 12 Sidford. So yes, there, you know, and that's been going back and forth. There have been uh, multiple chances for consultation on this. Uh, and we feel like we've done everything we can at this point to uh, deal with the massing in an appropriate manner. Yeah, it is a difficult lot. Okay, let's hear from then from the neighbors. The first speaker is Rochelle Chevalier at 43 Pasadena Gardens, and we have uh, a letter as well. Several page letter from Rochelle. Ms. Chevalier, are they, you Hello. there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you, good, good afternoon, thank you. Um, uh, According to the uh, public hearing notice, the committee of adjustment must be satisfied on four points. The first one being that the variance requested is minor. Um, on point one, it, it, I disagree that it's minor. I, I have lived at 43 Pasadena Gardens for 10 years. 
And in that time, I've undertaken significant effort and expense to improve my house that required more repair and enhancement than was originally reported at the house inspection. So I had to undertake some reconstruction on the yeah, main ma floor. Ma'am, ma'am, you only have a five minutes, so I suggest we have your two and a half page single type letter. Will you talk about, let, other than what you did on your property, I'm, how about telling us about what's wrong with this property? I, I appreciate you, that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm summarizing what I've written. Okay. I'm not reading the whole thing. Great, okay. Um, so I, I, I did consult my neighbors with these minor plans, and I find that the... Uh, uh, I, I partnered with the city of Toronto on many of the improvements that I've made, um, including tree planting and a safety assessment help program and the flood protection program. Um, my consideration was to improve my house, but also to enhance the neighborhood and respect my neighbor's wishes uh, and comfortable living. I think that the impact this zoning request is, is far from minor. Um, it is major. It significantly uh, devalues my efforts and expenses, quashing my enjoyment of my property and everything that I have tried to achieve and nullifies that partnership, all that work that came with the City of Toronto. On, on point two, uh, uh, the proposal is not desirable. Uh, it is an addition tantamount to constructing another home in all of our backyards and uh, in a, on a peninsula shaped lot. It, it block and significantly it blocks sunlight and views and destroys the beauty that uh, I have worked so hard to create. On point three, uh, you'll hear some comments from my other neighbors who I've consulted. Um, so I will defer to those comments. On point four, the general intent of the and purpose uh, of the official plan are maintained, uh, it, meaning that this is in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. Constructing a wall in the middle of several abutting properties is not in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. Constructing a, a large brick wall abutting a neighbor's property with no windows and extending the proposed property to the line of each abutting neighbor breaches privacy uh, respect and is also impersonal in code and contrary cold and contradicts the intention of the homes around it. Um, I also took some time to review what was submitted online. Um, the diagrams that were submitted are deceptive and don't provide perspective of the full scale of the proposed change. There are renderings, 3D renderings of what the structure would look like. And um, I added them as an addendum to my original statement so that the committee could see the full scale and that this is in fact not a, vi a minor variance. It's disproportion disproportionately large appendage that will be an eyesore in the neighborhood and, and a major imposition on the bordering neighbors. Um, I, I've learned too that one of the support, one letter of approval comes from someone who's been paid to be architecture. So I find that to be in conflict of interest. Um, and on the obtuse angles, speaking of obtuse angles, uh, I, I live on a, a lot that's um, almost a, a mirror image. And when I originally purchased this house, I learned from uh, architect, the work, architects that I worked with that there is the option to expand out and up, contradicting what was previously mentioned. Um, and, and in summary, I strongly believe that this is not a major a minor variance it is a major variance and it very negatively affects uh me and my neighbors and the, it is not in keeping with the neighborhood so i'll close on that thank you thank you miss chevalier does anyone have any questions for miss chevalier based on her presentation and her letter before we move on to the next objector okay next objector is Victoria Zaremba at three Pasadena Gardens. Quite a distance. Um, I think there was a misunderstanding. I'm actually um, speaking in support of the application. Okay. There has been a Okay, where, where are you? Uh, first, of all, first of all, where are you in relation to the property? How, how close uh, by are you? I'm about 100 feet away. Okay. Because the number is, I guess, based on the numbering, it 
So uh, can you just briefly give us your position, your, why you're in support? Yes, there has been a significant amount of development in the neighborhood, and I believe that the plan is in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. Um, the plans that they have set for building on the side lot is actually more beneficial as it maintains a lot more of the green space. And as you are aware, the, the shape of the lot is very strange. If mm -hmm. they did build um, in the front, I think that would impede sight lines for the road and building up would block the sun, which they are not doing. So I would support the application as they have planned. Okay, thank you. So the available options available to the applicant either to go up or that you figure this is the most appropriate place to place an addition uh, on this property. So that thank is you. correct. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, next speaker, Jack Massey. I think we have a letter from Mr. Massey as well that I recall reading. Uh, 34 Sun Valley Drive. Hi. Hello, um, Mr. Massey. Hi. So I'd like to speak on several points. Um, the first of all is the apparent attempt to change the wording of this property as building onto the side. It's not building onto the side. It is building backwards yeah we, and it would build yeah it's each lot you know there's some technical issues when you have a corner lot or a, a strange lot like this in terms of what they call the front yard and sometimes you see in these large houses uh you know in neighborhoods where they're looking to put a pool in their front yard now obviously they're not putting a pool in their front yard it's just the way the lot is defined so the, the don't get i wouldn't get hung up on whether they call this a side addition or a rear addition or a front addition those are just based on how the lot is determined. But we do have your letter. Just highlight on what your concerns are. Well, I think it is relevant because um, it technically is the back of the house. Mm -hmm. It would go directly onto the back of my property. If I had um, a house that was directly next to mine, they would not be able to build all the way back to the very far of, of, of my house. This house would go right to the far corner um it would be a complete monolith like living having a being imprisoned it would be just a few feet away from my rear property line so terminology you, you may not feel the same way but that is the rear of my property okay um they do have options they could go upwards now the person from three pasadena who lives way way down the street mentioning about the sun the sun wouldn't even impact them and I'm just going to say that I do feel there's a conflict of interest with the people that are uh, in support of this because the the architect lives around the corner and there's a lot of friends in the neighborhood and I am completely adjacent to this property. So there are over 300 near identical houses in our neighborhood. Um, they mostly build an actual sideways so it doesn't go onto someone's rear property line which it would for me so again this is a rear addition on that house going onto what would be the rear of my house um, it would completely destroy my experience of my yard i would be the only person the only house out of over 300 near identical houses in our neighborhood having that so it would be um, completely unfair to me it would decrease the value because I'd be the only house that has that. And um, uh, a third story addition would be much more favorable to me. Plus this neighbor could build a true side addition um, that would be um, not impact anyone because it is a corner lot and it would be the true side of that property. They have absolutely tons of space to go up and a true sideways. All the houses in this neighborhood have gone up and sideways. Um, sorry, just one second. Turn that off. Um, sorry, I just have to get power because my computer's going to die. Um, yeah, so essentially, this is not a, a small addition. It would more than double the footprint of the house. Um, it, would, it, it would become the largest house in the whole neighborhood out of over 300 houses um, and if you were to come down and see this in person uh, you would be able to see that this is not minor going from 1.5 meter uh, for, it's supposed to be 7.5 meter setback asking for 1.5 meters 
that six meters, it's um, going from 1.5 or 1.39 to 7.5 is over a 500% variation. Um, there is no way 540% could be considered minor in any circumstances. Okay, so, sir, don't go into those examples you gave us in the letter, please. We know we know percentages, and uh, I, you're, you, I need you to wrap up in any event, but I wouldn't get into that this discussion of what 540%. We all know what 540% is. So just could you wrap up, though? Yes, sir. I'm done. Okay, that's uh, thank you for those uh, comments. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Massey? Uh, we have his his letter here that we've read. Um, in terms of uh, what he's said, and if not, we'll just move on to the next speaker, which is is Dave Taylor still there? If thirteen Sidford, I th we thought you were on the other application. Yes, I'm here. Okay, Mr. Taylor, are you in favor or you're in opposition? Um. Well, I just, yeah, I'm in, I'm in favor of, of the application. Um, I'm on the property immediately to the south mm -hmm. along the side uh, lot line of okay. uh, 40 Pasadena. And um, I guess I, I'm, I don't want to radiate, radiate, radiate um, the comments that have been made about the yards um, that in my letter, I've, I, you know, uh, detailed that mm -hmm. um I, I guess i just wanted to my you know my position is that when this property is really limited in the way that the uh the rear yard overlaps the the side yard and if you look at the developable area that's left it's very minimal compared to a typical property and so i i think in order for um this property to have the same opportunity to develop right you know there has to be you know we we need it, you need to consider going into the rear yard and there's you know a couple of other uh precedents for this um one in which is even more severe um and uh you know so i i think that in the end it's it's minor in nature i'm also concerned that the alternative um i guess i'm not in agreement with my neighbors that the alternative of a you know a three-story you know, something that approaches the allowable de density would actually have a much greater impact um, okay. on our on all of our properties. Okay, thank you. Um, and like I said, your address is 13 Sidford Court. 14 Sidford Court. 14. Okay. Yeah. Okay, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Taylor or can we go back to uh, the agent for uh, rebuttal? Okay. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Briefly, uh, I wanted to address, you know, obviously the concerns brought up by the neighbors, one being the sunlight uh, affecting number 43. Uh, 43 is on the southeast side of the property. Uh, and I believe, you know, given the sun path and, and shadowing, there aren't going to get a lot of loss of sunlight with this addition. Uh, it would be mid afternoon before we would be shadowing much of that yard. Uh, also, the owner talked about her looking out. Um, currently, she has a second floor deck that looks at it over the neighbors. So I'm sure the neighbors don't want the overlook from number 43. So it's a privacy thing, and I'm not sure where that argument goes. So there's a second floor, second floor rear balcony on the neighbor's property at uh, there is 43. There is. So they have significant overlook, uh, which is not you know great for everybody. Uh, number 34. If you uh, look at the property survey, number 34 Sun Valley, that is absolutely a, a side yard butting. His rear yard uh, butts onto. I think it's number 12 Sidford. Uh, in fact, there's in the pictures, there's a shed at the rear of his yard. So he, it is a side yard condition that we're butting into, not the rear. Uh, and for, um, I believe, oh, for 12 Sidford at the rear, I believe he had sent in a letter uh, worried about uh, the wall at the back of his property, only he has a large garage at the rear of the lot. So I'm again, um, you know, the rear wall of the proposed addition is not really having a huge impact on the neighboring properties. Uh, and if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Smith or for any of the neighbors? Uh, or is someone ready to make a motion? Members, we need a motion. I'm prepared to make a motion. I find that the application is minor in nature and that it's consistent with the general intent and principles of the zoning bylaw in the official plan. No motion to approve the application. Okay, and there are no conditions. Thank you, Ms. Ruddick. Do you have a seconder from Ms. Ruddick's motion? I'll second. Second, Ms. McCluskey, all in favor? Okay, you have unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Smith, and thank you, neighbors. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, we'll now move on to item number 10, 208 Indian Road. And we have, uh, this is an application to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. There are uh, five variances. Uh, we have five letters of opposition. Um, yeah, there was some, there's been no, something of comment about uh, not enough time. Yeah, there's some complaints about not having pe neighbors not having enough time to respond, and there is a very short window. But how, however, my note I made a note that notwithstanding that, we got you know f several very well written, well researched, well considered uh, letters of objection on this application. So there, I guess there was time, where people uh, worked in order, as is important to get it done. But uh, we realize it is a short window, especially with COVID. So um, we have on this application registered as speakers, uh, Johnny Sira, the agent, as well as a uh, number of uh, neighbors. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six staff. Do we, are all six of these people on the line or did some of them, they are, okay. Good to know. Okay, Mr. Sira, this is a new uh, detached dwelling with an attached garage. Your floor space index is only slightly over, but you have uh, depth variances, uh, wall heights, you have the deck uh, above the ground, so, um, and the side lot line. So can we get a brief presentation on this, is including if there's been any consultation with the neighbors before bringing this application? Uh, hello? Hello. Um, okay, yes. So there are can you hear me? Keep going, we'll let you know. Yeah. You haven't said much. Okay, so here, the, my clients have consulted uh, the neighbors, so there has been some positive feedback and some support. And uh, also, as you can see, there are letters of opposition. So yes, they have uh, consulted. Um, so can I just, I'll get into like uh, talking about some of the variances. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to speak to some parking concerns uh, the storage cabana in the rear yard, and also concerns of shadowing. So, first of all, as you spoke, uh, you talked about the uh, the first variance is uh, the floor space index, which we're just requesting a slight increase from point zero six, sorry, from point six to point six two. Um, the next issue, which has to do with the uh, the depth, we are requesting. Uh, from 17 from 17 meter max to uh, have a max depth of 19.35, and then for the height of the building, so the max uh, for the exterior walls is 7.5. We're requesting to have a maximum height of 8.95. Um, this we feel so most of the most of the houses on the street are three story houses, 
And uh, they are at uh, 10, 10 meters and some of the, them are in excess of 10 meters. So what we're asking for is less than nine meters of height. And the house itself, itself the way it's designed, 75% uh, of the roof area is actually sitting at 7.5 meters, which is uh, abides by the bylaw and 25% in the form of a clear story is sitting at 8.95. So we feel that it, it is minor and the 8.595 is not the, the entire roof. Um, and then for the, uh, for the deck, um, simply the, the, my client, they do have young children. And, uh, right now we have two steps going out of the house. If we, if we abide by the bylaw, we'd have to have four steps. So we're looking for something that is just a little safer. Um, so as for the parking, there have been some concerns that we would be removing some parking from the street. That's not the case. We're not adjusting the curb cut at all. Uh, we're not reducing any street parking. What we're actually doing is increasing two parking spots within the house. Existing, there are two parking spots in the back of the house. And uh, we'll have a two, two car garage and we'll have two parking spots in front. So there is a real concern in the neighborhood for parking and the lack of parking. So we're trying to address that and make a more positive situation. Uh, the situation, there was a comment about there being a storage slash cabana in the backyard. That cabana is simply taking the space of where right now there's a garage. Uh, so the cabana will be approximately the same size. And it's also an ancillary building. So therefore we are not um, obstructing any bylaws there. So we are below the, uh, the max for any ancillary building. Is there plumbing in that As structure? The there's plumbing in the toilet and sink? Well, yeah, we wanted to that. have, uh, we did want to have uh, some plumbing in there because we were hoping to use it as a cabana for the pool. Okay. Well, I, I think, I think okay. by reading some of these letters, that was a significant concern of the neighbors, I believe, of the but, potential but, use yeah, of this, it, it you know, in the presence of a toilet so close to their lot line, or I think I read something about that. Is there, isn't that a major issue of the concern is this cabana? Um, well, there was this idea that it should be included within the GFA, but yeah. the bylaws do state that you're allowed an ancillary building, right? So I, we, it's, it's not in the variances. It was the, the plans examiner didn't see it to put it in the variances, right? So, uh, I believe we're within all the bylaws. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then also foreshadowing the existing house on the property is nine, uh, 9.25 meters. Um, so it's actually taller than the structure that we're proposing, which is at 8.95. And as I said, the majority of the roof is only at 7.5. So the neighbors are actually going to have less shadowing because the house will be shorter. So mm -hmm. you can't see why there's any issues with shadowing. Okay. Okay. So thank yeah, you. Uh, can you just wrap up because you're at five minutes, Mr. Sira. Uh, that's everything. Okay. So let's uh, hear, I don't know, uh, you know, as I said it a couple of times this morning, uh, if we have one, two, three, four, six speakers, if you hear something someone else said and you don't necessarily have to repeat it, uh, covering the same points, if you have a different perspective from where you are in relation to the property or some point that someone isn't, didn't bring up, but uh, just not to raise the same points uh, over and over again by subsequent speakers when we're so pressed for time. So uh, we have the first speaker uh, registered, and if uh, just go in order, what we have on the list here, uh, not in proximity. Um, well, let's hear from maybe the most directly affected neighbor first, Diana Nielsen, 210, right next door. Hello? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi. Um, yes, I live uh, right next door, and yeah. um, I didn't uh, draft a letter of objection because I didn't have time to your earlier point. So yeah. um, I know there are other speakers, so I'll just touch on a couple of issues. Mm -hmm. um, overall, the demolition of an existing house in this type of a character street with a proposed um, ultra contemporary house is not in keeping with the current streetscape of these character homes. and. Um, 
to my knowledge, there's only one other new house on Indian Road that was built because the previous one uh, burnt down and that's several blocks down. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, having just completed a, a massive renovation of my own, I'm not against modernization. I'm not against expansion uh, by thoughtful additions. And um, um, I, I do want to mention that uh, my own renovation, um, other than occasional noise during the day, did not impact the streetscape or did not impact, you know, my neighbors. Um, so, um, the previous speaker uh, did address my concerns about parking in, in terms of losing a parking spot, but I do want to raise the point that there are no houses um, on our block and, and possibly other blocks on Indian Road that have front yard driveways. Yeah. Okay, so that's, I know that's that that's, uh, that's a common theme and I know that that's something that Gord Perks mm -hmm. is pursuing possibly today. And um, so I'll just move on to the next and last point is that um, the front of the house, because of the parking, will be mostly concreted and the backyard will also lose significant green space because of the elevated deck, um, the cabana and the pool. So the lack of green space will um, adversely affect the, tr the drainage and this will become a problem to, to not only, you know, my backyard, but but to the south and, and possibly to the neighbors on um, Grenadier. So, um, and would also, I don't know if that's been addressed with the, with the, also the sewage treatment system as well. And that's all I'd like to say on this point. Okay, thank you. Uh, I wanted to certainly hear your concerns because you're uh, right next door. I realized there wasn't enough time as some people mentioned, but some of your neighbors wrote some really good letters in the, from the 6th to the 9th, I guess that's what they did over the, over the weekend. Um, mm -hmm. but I wanted to hear your concerns and you're right. A lot of the comments appear to be the straight street facing garages. You know, the fact that people brought up as we'll hear from Mr. Delenko, the fact that this is a, an Edwardian neighborhood and the very fact that they're taking this home down and putting up a new, new build is something that the neighborhood's not happy with. Uh, however, it's within the applicant's right to build a new house, but in that case, then the house has to fit in with the, at least with the built form in the neighborhood. And uh, certainly that's, I take it as part of the disappointment here as reflected in that letter from uh, Mr. Delenko. So having said that, let's hear from Mr. Delenko, 166 Grenadier Road. And we have your letter, sir. Hi, I'm actually, sorry, it's Helen Kula, Michael's wife. He wasn't okay. able to attend because of a work commitment. So I'm speaking on his behalf today. Okay. Um, I did want to also just, um, reiterate Diana's um, concerns about the very tight timelines associated with this hearing. Um, my husband and I had just two business days um, between receipt of the notification, which was actually the first that we'd heard of this. Um, I was not consulted. I'm, mm. I'm not sure who Mr. Serha reached out to, but um, other neighbors that were also received notifications who are unfortunately not able to participate in today's hearing yes. or to um, compose the written submission also did not were not contacted. So I'd be interested to know a little more about the extent of that consultation. Um, we have two business days and essentially a week. And I would note that the applicant's filing was submitted on July 17th. So <laughs> to me, they've had essentially four four months to prepare. It doesn't seem particularly fair or equitable if you're looking for full community participation yeah. um, uh, in a decision like this. Yeah, having said that, um, thankfully, we do have some really good letters before us, including Mr. Parrish's at 205 Indian Road and your letter. Um, so let's hear what the substantive comments are. Since, oh, uh, sure, exactly. <laughs> so I did want to just, um, I guess, uh, to a certain extent, building and extending on what Diana said, um, I think, you know, our objections begin with the fact that I don't, we do not believe these variances and the associated plans support the general intent of the official plan. Policy 4.15 requires the development of established neighborhoods to, quote, respect and reinforce the existing physical character of the neighborhood, unquote. We need to be considering heights, mass, scaling, and dwelling type of nearby residential properties. Again, another quote, and quote, continuation of special built form features. I'd like to draw your attention to a 2011 OMB hearing, OMB case number PL 10820, that overturned approval of variances granted by the Committee of Adjustment for 192 Grenadier Road, a property down the block from me and around the corner from 208 Indian, specifically on these grounds. And I would really encourage the committee to consider this. Um, the Edwardian structures that characterize our neighborhood feature gabled roofs, symmetrical placement of front facing elements, front porches, 
extends the green space at both front and back. Garage is located at the back of the property and a largely vertical emphasis. The building that is being proposed contains none of these elements. It features a modern cube design with a flat roof, asymmetrical placement of its front porch, sorry, front door, no porch, limited green space of both front and back, an integrated front facing two car garage and driveway that quite frankly is suburban in character and largely horizontal and in its emphasis. I want to make it clear that I don't object to the design per se. It's the fact that, you know, in the current in the context that for which that's being proposed, it simply doesn't contribute to the heritage and uniformity of the streetscape that I know and love. Um, I'd also again would argue strongly that the variances are neither minor or individually. I think they are significant indeed in both size and impact. Um, I'd like to call your attention specifically to the one related to the increase in dwelling depth, which uh, is a 14% increase. Not only does this disproportionately increase the massing and the scale, it also unnecessarily compresses a planned pool, hot tub, ancillary building, decking, and all the other backyard amenities into a very small slice of the backyard and essentially removes the spacing and buffer that allows us to enjoy our property at 166 Grenadier Road. Um, I have similar concerns about the variances related to the increase in the front, rear, side, and wall height. Again, I just feel like it's too large for the property. And again, I think the design choices, unfortunately, will even magnify that impact even more. Finally, I am the one who wrote uh, the letter about the toilet concerns. Mm -hmm. um, that toilet will be placed 0.6 meters, just two feet from the fence that separates my property uh, from the applicants and will be situated directly in front of our dining patio. So I'm sorry, I don't see how, how this could not possibly negatively impact our ability to enjoy our property. Um, finally, again, we have raised some concerns in the letter about the rear deck height, which has been increased by 27% with the proposed variance. Mm -hmm. That design fails to acknowledge the downward slope towards our property and creates significant overlook and privacy concerns for us. Um, you know, in general, I just don't feel that this, you know, the what's being proposed really, you know, fails to respect the intent and the purpose of the city's bylaws. Um, these exist to ensure the appropriate relationship and spacing between buildings to maintain privacy and ensure that neighbors can enjoy their respective properties. I, the proof construction that being is being proposed ignores the proximity of its neighbors, impinges on our privacy, and will curtail our ability to enjoy our backyards. Um, and okay. I would remind you again that you wrap yeah, up, please. Thanks, but the yes. values reference and bylaws here are again our maximum. So these are the upper limits of what the city deems appropriate. So these variances are seeking to go beyond those limits. So thank you okay. very much for your time today. Thank you, Ms. Coolen. I'll just point out I have we have a letter from you and from your husband. Yes. Separate letters. Yes. So, you know, I think and your letter is, you know, like I said, I agree the time limits are very, very tight, but yet people seem to be able to uh, you know meet with those uh, time constraints. Uh, and you're yeah. the way you did point out about that this house, again, like I said, there's nothing we can do about it that to take down a house and demolish it and build a new house. Uh, but there's nothing that is you know, on a planning issue that we can do about things like that. The house has not been designated a heritage property, I take it, notwithstanding you say it's a wonderful example of arts and crafts architecture, both inside and outside. So thank you for your letter. Thank indeed, you for your submission. And, and I would I did want to just remind again the, the council that, you know, this neighborhood constitutes uh, essentially the largest extant stock of Edwardian houses in North yeah, America. So when we don't have official heritage designation, again, you know, chipping away by allowing yeah, so, um, buildings yeah. like this inevitably does change the character of the neighborhood, yeah. which again, referring back to the official plan is, I think, to be very problematic. Yeah, Thank you know, so the applicant is today. within his rights to build a new home. Uh, we may not Absolutely. agree with that, but then he has to follow uh, and, you know, only have minor variances and it's subject to the uh, the uh, examination of city staff and the neighbors and and ultimately the committee of adjustment so let's go on to the next speaker uh, we do have a few more here um, Grant Cassidy from 217 Indian Road and again if you don't feel you have to make extensive comments you don't have to because um, we have a lot of people here mr. Cassidy Yes, thank you. I live across the street and a couple houses up. Um, I want to, I will be very brief. Um, I certainly wasn't consulted. You know, I'm not sure who was consulted because you were going to have at least seven of us who were consulted. Um, secondly, I strongly agree that this is not minor. It changes the whole streetscape and, and the feel of the neighborhood. Um, and I object to front yard parking. We don't have that. 
and you go, oh, there's no argument for doing it. I just heard the person who pr proposed it say you're adding two parking spaces to the two in the back. Does someone need four parking spaces in this neighborhood with TPC is so good? So totally, it's not a minor variance. It's a fundamental change to the neighborhood. Thank right, you. they're moving the parking from the rear to the front. You don't feel that's appropriate, correct? Absolutely not, because I mean, we don't have that on our street or any of the streets around here. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cassidy. Uh, let's hear from Will Parrish, who again wrote a, uh, a very good letter, 205 Indian Road. And, Hi, uh, thank you. Hello, sir. So Hi, again, despite the time constraints, you were able to uh, put together a two-page letter, which is certainly better than a nine-page letter in my estimation, because committee has to read it. Uh, so you want to let us know just what your concerns are, especially about this, these, uh, this parking situation, the two-car parking well, garage at the front of the house. I wasn't going to raise the notification until you uh, have based. You seem to think that the quality of the um, submissions is just is it makes it okay. Uh, I'm concerned with the notification. I don't know who didn't respond because they got the notification after the deadline and threw up their hands. Uh, I was I felt forced to rate something very quickly, not fully understanding yeah. all aspects of the. I think that's a big problem, and I, I I'm as a right I would think. That short of notification should trigger something. Um, yeah. Well, again, that's that's a for a, on a higher level than this what we're doing here today. I, I agree that the timelines well, are tight, and that that certainly affects the neighbors, especially when there hasn't been any consultation. I'm wondering who was consultant if Miss Kula wasn't was wasn't extended. Who did they consult with? Uh, not the people behind them. So, and anyway, let's hear. I have your letter here. I think it's a good letter. You raised some points. I, I so just let's hear more about the parking situation and just confirm. So the reason they need these two car parkings in the front is because they're taking it out of the back. Is that correct? Okay. I just want to say I was not cons I was not consulted uh, either. Um, yes, to um, and I, I do think you have the ability to defer this based on the fact there wasn't proper notification. And I've heard everything from Canada Post to your own mail room is the problem, but I don't think that even matters. Um, I, I yeah, the, the two car parking. It, I, this is even it's. Sounds worse than we actually thought initially. If, if they're using the, two, the driveway as parking spots as well, I thought they were going to be forced to put them in the garage. But either way, it, it, it's very much out of character on the street, as someone has said. And it's you know the incrementalism that's happening around here. We're going to start seeing them pop up everywhere. Um, I think it's a bad step. It's just going to set the wheels in motion for more of these applications for this kind of thing. Okay, and I see you're um, across I, the street over one house, two out. You're on the corner of Grenadier, right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. And I just wondered if, in the response, the, uh, uh, the the agent could speak to soft landscaping on the front yard as well. I mean, this it's just I, I it's pretty, sounds pretty. And is he actually proposing two parking spots in addition to a garage? Okay, well, let's hear from him in response. Um, thank you, sir. It's Stephanie Wood, at eighty nine Constance. Yes. Okay. Yes. You don't... Hello. Hello. Hi. I'll be brief. Um... Hi, can you hear me? I... Yes. Hello. Oh, okay. Um, thanks. I just, uh, just, just in the outset, just for the record, I also didn't receive any consultation and uh, scrambled to put together my very short letter in uh, about a day. But uh, I just wanted to echo uh, some of the things that, that people raised before, just about the historic and leafy green character of the neighborhood. Yeah. Of and it yeah. seems very out of character to have this concrete front garage. And, and an entire sort of hard landscaped backyard, including a raised deck, a cabana, a hot tub, a pool. It, it, I just wonder about what's going to happen to the drainage and the green space behind. Um, for those of us who back, I don't back on directly to that property, but that end of that property sort of is going to come to the corner of my next door neighbor. So we're all going to feel the effects, I think, in terms of the hard landscaping both at the front and back of their property okay. um and but again it, and just i just don't I, i'm very concerned in such a historic neighborhood that this uh re replacement of a historic house with a very very modern sort of brutal architecture is is not uh, is going to set some kind of a precedent that's going to sort of uh completely change the character of, of, of a historic neighborhood. It just seems wildly out of place with every house in the neighborhood and and is not a sympathetic or sensitive um, 
addition to the neighborhood. And I just wanted to raise the point about the policy um, in the official plan. I think it's the policy five that uh, that talks about um, things that should be uh, development it should respect and reinforce the existing physical character of the neighborhood and i just don't see how a proposal such as this could be said in any way to respect or reinforce uh, the existing physical character of this neighborhood thank Thanks. you miss wood thank you any questions for miss wood before we move on so our last speaker is kevin taylor of 219 indian road we have mr taylor's letter again another uh, two-page letter, um, specifically mentioning, uh, and I'd like them to con comment on something that we haven't heard about, um, the fact that you say that 212 Indian recently made a, re a variance request to establish a singular front park yard parking space and was rejected to grant even a singular parking space to this application, never mind a double garage and driveway, would not only be unfair to 212 Indian Road, it would be completely out of character for the neighborhood. So, uh, Mr. Taylor, we've read your letter. If you could just uh, highlight, perhaps not use your whole five minutes because we're kind of pressed for time here today. Um, and then we can uh, move forward. So thank sure. you again for your letter. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. So uh, I know I don't want to harp on about it. Uh, everyone has, but I received this letter on Friday, uh, November... Six. I don't remember what day it was, November, yeah, the six, whatever the it six. was, but it was yeah. one, one business, yeah, one, one business day before the deadline. I spoke to neighbors across the street. They received the letter on the Monday, literally the day comments were due. So uh, although you do have some good letters here and some objections filed, I suspect that had people been given more time, you may have even more having spoken to people on the street. Yeah. Well, you know, and again, it's not um, quantity, it's quality, and it's the most directly affected people. And I think a lot of you have been able to weigh in with really well letters. Maybe it's, you know, we all leave things to the last minute anyway, at least I do. Uh, so this way you have no time to procrastinate. Yeah. Okay. You got to sit down and just get it done. And people did. Sure. So I appreciate, sure. I realize yeah. from the 6th and the ninth is not enough time. These are important, very important principles and how in the built form in various neighborhoods in the city, and it deserves the time. So we will certainly pass these comments on to uh, the high, you know, the powers that be, and I'm, they're aware of it as well. But we're yeah, all, so these are all challenging respect. times with about, COVID. You know, it's challenging. Yeah, it's not about, okay, I get it. All right, I, you, yeah. you've made your point. My point is, it's not about quality or quantity of comments. It's about fairness and it's about democracy. And people who don't have any time or anything near sufficient time to comment on something that's so, so impactful to their, to their neighborhood and their livelihood, uh, I think it's just wrong. So, you know, I've made uh, three calls to three different peoples at the city uh, to try and get somebody to acknowledge uh, the lack of fairness that we've all had imposed upon us as a result of this, and nobody seems to really care. So in any event, my main uh, purpose of joining this call today was, first of all, to make sure that everyone was aware that there were eight letters filed uh, in opposition, that they, those were all considered. Uh, so that all of our, our neighbors have had that chance to chime in. And then just to reiterate, really, most of what everybody's already said, mainly from my perspective, that um, the, the design, the plans of the home proposed definitely do not fit within the character of the neighborhood. I think as with respect to the uh, proposal that 212 made for parking in front of its house, I think it'd be ridiculously unfair to them uh, to grant uh, not only a driveway in front of the home, but a double car garage. Um, and, you know, just quite honestly, I can't imagine how, given uh, the, the character and the nature of the neighborhood, how it could be deemed minor or acceptable to have a double car garage built into the front of a home in this neighborhood, especially when there is already more than adequate width of access for vehicular access into the backyard where there is uh, a parking space and space and an existing garage. So from my point of view, you know, it, it, it's not necessary to do that. The, the home already has perfectly sufficient access to, uh, to quality and, and, and parking and garage in the backyard. Uh, and so given that point and also the fact that the, the home as it's presently proposed just doesn't fit into the character uh, of the neighborhood whatsoever. So okay. um, that's my point. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Anybody oh, sorry, have any the, questions? The other thing, sorry, the, yeah. the, other, the, the other thing, the other point was, uh, I just wanted to make clear, I was not, nor was my wife, nor anybody else in the vicinity of my home, 
consulted by the applicants uh, at any point on this application. Okay, duly noted. Uh, any call, any uh, questions for Mr. Taylor, or let's move back to the agent. We've heard a lot from the neighbors. Mr. Sirup, can you please uh, reply to the concerns of the neighbors and also clarify the situation, as I believe uh, Mr. Parrish was asking uh, about the parking situation, what's happening at the front, what's happening at the back to the existing parking. Yes. So... My clients, uh, they did, uh, they did uh, consult the uh, adjacent neighbors uh, oh. to either side and to uh, across the street. Um, what about behind? They did not realize. Sorry, they did not realize that there would be so much pushback. We just realized last week when all the letters started coming in that there was actually this much pushback. Mm. Um, there's some speakers that are on streets that are not even, you know, on constant, which is a street far down. Well, that, um, I, I, I'm looking at the site, Mac. I see where Ms. Wood house is at 87, and she's kind of uh, in the back, and she's she's so not so I, I guess far my away. question just, just is, are, are we to go to, you know, every house in the neighborhood for how many blocks and consult everybody? So there was no idea that there would be this much pushback. We We appreciate that you know people care about their community mm -hmm. um so yeah the thing was and often in other in other committee of adjustments you you talk to you know your jason neighbors you talk to a few across the street um you look for any concerns uh helen oh, sorry diane which is uh 210 she did not really voice any concerns until uh, a couple of days ago up until then it seemed like she was on board um so yeah there, there's a question of like well to to what extent you know, does a person have to go and, to, you know. In um, any so event, that's, so let's that's, that's, let's just respond to the issues now, aside from the who you spoke to. It looks like, you know, maybe you didn't realize, you thought this was going to be a slam dunk, so you didn't do as much, but these people are coming well, not, forward, we didn't, uh, you know, next door. We didn't door. think slam dunk, but nobody was really coming forward, right? There was, so, okay. Uh, let's, well, the, sometimes the people go and, so hold on a second. Did you drop off a package or did your client drop off a package to the adjacent neighbors on either side. I realize there's no one really directly behind, yes. but there's people on the other sides of Grenadier and on uh, Constance. But did you drop off packages for anyone, like to go see them, unless they get yes, until we they get off packages the okay. to the neighbors that were adjacent and across the street, right? People that we felt that were, were you know, in adjacent okay. to the house. Um, okay, talking about 212, the, the parking, I do believe, and, and I'm not completely sure, but where we meet the 50 percent soft landscaping right there is a drawing in there that shows a house that is not exactly what the house that we're proposing we need to look at the the plan the site plan of the house right and i do believe 212 did not meet the soft landscaping requirements and therefore they got rejected right we are within uh the bylaws okay okay and then there's another concern so 210 210 was talking about how uh, there's a reduction of green space. Her backyard is mostly concrete. So I see that as a, as a, as a big contradiction to green space. And it's an eyesore. Okay, and then the situation of the parking, we, we, we do understand that uh, putting parking spaces in the front uh, is not completely in line with the character of the community, but uh, these are nothing that we're not we're not going against any bylaws. We do believe we do have the right to stay within the bylaws and you know construct what is what is lawful, right? And there is precedent in the neighborhood. There are houses that do have parking in front of the house. We realize it's not the majority, but there are some. So um, I think people should be allowed to improve their parking situation. Whenever they have guests to the house, it's very difficult to find any parking. So yes, we're gonna have two parking spots in the front, but it's a convenience, which perhaps would improve a lot of the situation in the, uh, in the neighborhood. And it's within the bylaws. So once again, if we're talking about the, the five uh, minor variances, right? I think we should really speak to those and getting on about subject and character and all of that. I mean, that's a, that's a different debate uh, that's not really part of this 
uh, forum, right? So well, uh, yeah. <laughs> The, the, ver the test goes the proposal desirable for the appropriate development and or use of the land or building. So, and the variance is minor. So it's, it's, it's still the proposal. They're saying it's not appropriate to have the garage in the front. So I agree there's no really triggered variance, but it is included in your, in your plan here, All right? So uh, any further comments? Uh, reply to the comments of the neighbors or are we ready to bring it into committee and see if there's any follow-up questions or if someone's ready to make a motion yeah well the thing is we do want to say that uh, uh, the neighbors to the south have approved the neighbors across the street have approved um, you know unfortunately uh, people that approve don't come to these type of meetings often as you can see most people that are here are people that object and that's an unfortunate thing that happens in life but there's probably uh, you know many people that do approve, but they just don't show up, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it skews really maybe the fever or the temperature of the neighborhood. It unfortunately makes it look really negative. But if we really consulted everybody, it might be that it's it's more of a positive thing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they're not here, right? And that's what happens in life. People complain, and they're the ones who are heard. But everyone's who's for and pro, they usually feel like, well, okay, you know what, I don't have the time to really be for it, and they don't well, show Well, anyway, I, let's, let's get into it, because Mr. Sira, uh, they go, in many of the applications today, we have both letters of support and letters of objection, and I, you're right, I guess maybe it's up to the, the owners of the property, provided they're, I don't know if they already live there, to go around to their neighbors or under the yes, advice absolutely. of their agent to, to, to obtain those letters, they don't just magically show up, you're right. Uh, but I'm saying if you, you look at the addresses of the people that did object and see uh, how proximate they are. In any event, let's see if committee members have any further questions or if someone's ready to bring a motion on this application. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm prepared to bring a motion in to reject this application. I find that the proposal is not consistent with the existing character of the neighborhood and is not consistent with the general intent and purpose of the official plan and the zoning bylaws. Okay, thank you, Ms. Reddick. Do I have a second to Ms. Reddick's motion? Mr. Palmer, all in favor? The application is unanimously refused. Thank you, neighbors, and thank you, Mr. Sira and neighbors. Make sure you fill out a uh, request for a copy of the decision. Okay. Next application is item number 11. Mr. Chair, if we could just announce to the public that are participating, they've already probably been joining for the 1 o'clock session. We are behind, so please just bear with us. Um, we're on item 11. Okay. Okay, item 11 is to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. Um, there are nine variances. We have uh, revisions. We have a front yard landscape variance, which has been eliminated, variance eight, I believe. And we have four letters of support. And we have the Swansea uh, Ratepayers Association. I believe this was just the standard request for on the six applications from Swansea for a deferral. I don't believe there are any substantive um, issues from King Kingsway, from the uh, Swansea Neighborhood Association. They did su submit a separate standalone letter. Oh, they, oh they, there's it's a separate letter? It's opposition to. OK, thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of, right, we have a Support. We have opposite. Where we, there's several opposition letters too. Three. Okay. Um, registered on this application, David Smith is the agent, and uh, then we have um, the Swansea ratepayers uh, registered as a speaker, as well as William Roberts from 63 South Kingsway, uh, a few doors away. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of committee. Um, my name is David Smith. I'm here representing the homeowners at 55 South Kingsway. I appreciate that you guys are well behind. So for the sake of expediency, I'll move a little quicker. Um, to clarify, 
there was two letters of objection submitted by the rate payers and one letter of objection submitted by 63. Uh, they relate specifically to drainage, which I'll circle back to. Uh, simply put, this application was developed hand in hand with city planning. There's nothing with regards to the variances that exceeds what, what's been previously approved. Uh, we have their support. Um, with regards to the revisions that you quickly mentioned, just to clarify, uh, it's the driveway variance that was removed and the front yard soft landscaping was increased from 55% to 58.7. This is important because both of those were elements uh, brought up in the letters of objection. Right. Um, what I what I will do at this point is just speak to the letters of objection and then I'll circle back to answer any questions you guys had just so that we can hear the objectors. Um, again, fundamentally, their concern is drainage. We know as an overriding element, uh, both drainage and grading have to be approved at the building permit stage. And if we don't satisfy the requirements of the building department, we don't get a building permit. Um, 55 South Kingsway is located at the absolute bottom basin of South Kingsway. So they are very sensitive to water issues and water mitigation. And it's in their best interest to deal with draining in, appropriate, uh, in an appropriate way. Um, it may look like we don't have a fair amount of soft landscaping, but actually we have almost as much as what's existing when you consider the fact that we are removing the rear detached garage and what was the existing garage. Uh, the front basically stays the same. And uh, for, again, sake of expediency, I went into the details of the variances. Suffice to say that we worked with city planning and there is nothing that, that uh, is out of character with the neighborhood. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Smith. So the variances we have before us are the correct variances, given the changes in the landscape uh, and the driveway you, width. You guys should have the correct. You guys should have the correct variances. Uh, the variances that went out on the mailer to public were not updated. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's. Do we have to hear Mr. S uh, Nick Singh from the Ratepayers Association. Welcome back. Mr. Singh? Uh, this should be a short one. <laughs> um, I'm not sure which um, variances we're looking at. The one that was sent out uh, had nine, and there was a revised one, which uh, shows four. So uh, I'm not sure what we're talking about here today. Is that Mr. Singh speaking? Yes. Did they not clarify? Yeah. Yeah, let's you clarify. Yeah. Is a, a, a revised waiver that was sent out showing four. So can we get Mr. Smith to clarify because the information in front of the committee and the public is what was mailed out, which was the nine variances. I don't believe Mr. Smith addressed any revisions. Um, there was, I thought. I'm oh, happy yeah. to clarify. No, there so I to clarify. Yeah, we have this waiver here. Revisions. Yes, there's two pages to the waiver. So uh, there's eight variances. One yeah. was removed. Yeah, we've reduced the proposed driveway width to now comply with the bylaw, removing the need for variance eight, right? And then increasing our front yard landscaping from 76.2 to 81.85. So in both cases, it's a improving this on the situation, right? Yes. Thank you. So I says, I know the mailer's already gone out, no changes to variance being sought can be made. I will simply mention the above noted changes during the hearing, expect there will be no issue as we're reducing what we are seeking. So he's actually making it less. Exactly. So that's what I referred to in my opening here, that uh, there was changes. So variance eight is being eliminated, and the front yard landscaping is increasing but he has not stated that publicly. Okay. Right? And I would the, be happy And the to waiver hear. form that we have on file is two pages of the same information. So does he just have to state that orally now at the hearing? If that's what the committee is to consider, yes. Yeah. So he's removing variance eight. Mr. Smith, can you tell us you're removing variance eight and you're increasing the front yard landscape? Yes. Absolutely. So we are removing variance number eight, and we are increasing the front yard landscaping for variance number seven 
from 55% to 58.7%, which is 76.2 square meters being increased to 81.58 square meters. Mm -hmm. Okay. All other, all other variances remain the same. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to Mr. Singh. Okay, Mr. Singh, so now we know what's what the state of the nation is, it's uh, variance eight has been eliminated and nine has been made better. Okay, so as per the waiver, uh, variance number three is marked removed. Um, according to what we just heard, variance number three remains. Is that correct? I'm not quite sure what his what waiver numbers. means yeah. because it's two pages of the exact same variances and it says number three is removed, but our number three is different than his number three. So based on the notice that was circulated, he has deleted variance eight, which is a driveway width of 6.25. He will comply with 5.8. And he's modified variance number seven from 55 to 58%. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, so are there any concerns, uh, Mr. Singh, otherwise? Um. Mm, no, just that what I'm seeing in front of me is it seems to be different. Eight, eight is revised. Are you looking at the I notice see. or the zoning notice? Because some of the numbering is different. Should be looking at the notice that went out to the community. Yeah, this seems to be a, an incorrect uh, waiver on here. The one I've received, the one I've downloaded mm -hmm. for 55 South Kingsway talks about a duplex. Right, flex revised. Number eight is just revised. And number three has been removed. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm looking at one that says three has been removed. I'm asking you to refer to your notice of public hearing because that's what's in front of the committee. Variance eight, okay. which is the driveway, yeah. has been deleted. Yeah. And variance seven has been amended. We're not using the numbering in his waiver. I think you're using, in your letter of November 9th, Mr. Singh, you're, you're referring to? No, I'm referring to the so waiver. So anyway, we know, what, we know what is, let's not get caught up in the numbers so that we can move forward on this, so we know what he's done. Okay. So we've said it six times already, well, we so that's, that's all that's been changed, so. Are there any further concerns of the Swansea ratepayers based on that? And then we got to well, move on to Mr. Roberts, so we got to keep moving. In, we do appreciate there's been an increase in the amount of uh, mm -hmm. uh, green space for drainage and the reduction of the driveway. However, we do think that the setback should be respected all around. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And now we have one more speaker, Mr. Uh, Roberts. Mr. Roberts, we have your letter. I live four days away. I live four days away. Four doors away, yes. Uh, basically, my concern primarily is in the... Mr. Mr. Roberts, we can't hear you. Sound like you're calling from a closet. Can you try speaking a little louder? I'll try to speak louder. How does that work? And also, when I speak, it's it's reverberating back. So, do you have a second device open? Device open? No, I don't. Okay, go ahead. Let us know what your concerns are, sir. Mr. Where Roberts. The city's done in the policy for increasing uh, rear setbacks and uh, soft landscaping in the front, and it relates to drainage issues. So the intent of the bylaw is to protect drainage. Because I recognize this is a low structure, I was willing to consider 7.5 at the rear rather than requiring the 8.81, but I have a serious concern with the 5.5, given the houses immediately behind the structure are on its north-south 
continuum. So we have a small side yard setback. Uh, this area has a lot of flooding happening. I've seen it happen on more than one occasion. And even though buildings will control drainage, the fact is that the building occupies as much space as it's planning to occupy. It will have an impact on that on that occupant, but more so for houses behind and on either side. And I have seen when flooding occurs, when the cash basins get covered up by ice, snow or leaves, the water rising above the sidewalk. So the lack of discharge on the site is a major concern. It's an official plan policy concern. And as a result, uh, I'm opposed to it on those grounds. Okay, you were, Mr. Uh, Roberts, were you listening in that you, you saw that he increased the soft landscaping? I saw the notice. It took me a bit of work looking at the revised waiver because it didn't match the notice. I worked it out. The soft landscaping hasn't been increased, but the building is still coming forward and it's still going back at the rear. I'm not arguing about the lift at the back because I presume it's for somebody who's physically challenged. So that's why I didn't object to the stairs at the rear. I did indicate I wanted to talk to the applicant, but I never heard from them. And I did send my email to him when he requested it from the rate payers. So while this apparently looks minor, the reality is it doesn't meet the intent of the bylaw in terms of maintaining the setbacks. Because those setbacks in the increased rear setback was specifically to encourage sufficient drainage at the rear of properties that they don't be paved over. And the sufficient setback of the property is deep enough to permit it. So those are my comments. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Roberts before we go back to Mr. Smith to respond to uh, the concerns? And uh, Yes, if uh, staff could bring up the site plan A00 very quickly, it'll, it'll help illustrate everything. Again, we're very sensitive to drainage. Uh, my clients have had to go out and take out the catch basins, uh, the site plan, you passed it. Um, you, you'll see, yep, yep, uh, scroll that one there, yeah. If you see, um, our front setback is the existing building. We have not moved forward. It's a variance, but the actual building will sit exactly where the current building sits. Okay. And if you notice 57 on the right-hand side of the proposed building, our depth is actually less than that existing building. So again, having worked with planning extensively on this, we all feel that it's in keeping with the neighborhood, with existing conditions, and that none of the variances being sought extend beyond what would be acceptable. It's again worth emphasizing that it's our responsibility to satisfy drainage and grading to achieve a building permit. If we can't do that, this will never be built. So that has to provide some sense of peace of mind to neighbors that are concerned with drainage because it's, it's a problem that we have to solve and we're motivated to solve it. I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Smith. Any questions for Mr. Smith or is someone ready to make a motion? Um, I'll move to approve. Consider this application to be minor in nature, um, subject to urban forestry condition um, number one. Oh. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe it's number one. Okay, and then also um, removal of um, variance number eight. And sorry, I should have done that in order. Um, modification of variance number seven to 58%, and uh, removal of variance number eight. Okay, thank you, Ms. McCluskey. Uh, second for that motion. Mr. Palmer. Can we have it tied to the site plans just because it's on a Absolutely. front? Very good idea. Okay, it's a friendly amendment accepted. Is it the proposed the site plan? Um, I think it's the site plan more to do with the front yard setback, which is at uh, yeah. uh, so that the driveway the driveway is on the south side and the uh, setback is to the north side of okay. the property. It looks like perhaps Mr. Smith can assist in what. I, I think, well, it, I, I'm more concerned with the setback of the front yard. So you you want plan. to tie it to plans as it relates to the building, correct? Correct, yeah. So maybe our wording could say the... Um, well, you don't need the roof. It's, the site plan would be... The new dwelling will be constructed substantially rather than the whole proposal. Correct. Okay. Okay. 
He, he still has to comply with the uh, landscaping and mm -hmm. other requirements. Okay. okay, all in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number 12 is another uh, contested application. Uh, 64 Runnymede. Tom Baskerville is the agent. Uh, let me just introduce this application, just go through the summary. Uh, this is Okay, this is another new two-story detached dwelling with four variances. We have a cover letter. We have um, support from 62. Uh, and we have uh, opposition as well. I think we have... I think there's a lot of opposition. 11 all letters of opposition. Uh, I believe we have uh, a couple letters of support, three letters of support in the cover letter. Okay, Mr. Baskerville, then we have, uh, let's just clarify who the speakers are on this, uh, Paul. We have 66 running meet right next door. Uh, we have 70 running meet, 68. 95, oh, well, that's Mr. Singh from the ratepayers, and as well as 67 Beresford. Okay. Mr. Baskerville. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Um, we have proposed four variances, but in dealing with our neighbor at 66 running need, we're going to propose that uh, the second variance as to reducing the rear yard setback uh, won't be required. Okay, so and eliminating that, variance two. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, so you're going to build it. So the first, line. yeah. The first variance uh, relates to uh, the FSI. Uh, we're seeking 0.79, which is very much in keeping with what's been approved in the neighborhood. Uh, our next door neighbor at 62, Runnymede, was approved for 0.843 uh, earlier this year. Um, so we're deleting number two. Uh, the building depth, we're seeking 18.91 meters versus 17 required. It's, it's our opinion that that's driven not by the actual dwelling depth, but by the projection of a wall for a carport, um, which has been included in the building definition, um, which we think is arguable, but that's, but that's what the planning examiner um, has required. So we're seeking the variance to accommodate it on that basis. Um, and the height we're seeking 9.4 versus 9. Uh, the addition is really just to accommodate uh, a peaked roof. It's an architectural style for the contemporary look of the, of the home. Um, the 0.4 uh, as an exceedance uh, is well within the range that's been approved in the area. And because it's a, uh, the walls are much uh, lower and in keeping with the required wall height, uh, we're, uh, we're well within um, the same range as our neighbors on either side. Um, in terms of dealing with some of the opposition um, that's been raised, a lot of it has come about because of a, just the unfortunate way that COVID's affected the processing of these things. It's, it's nobody's fault, but it is what it is. Um, we were also caught by surprise as to the timing of this coming forward. We were at one moment working through uh, technical uh, matters with staff. Uh, the application started with as many as 11 variances, and we've got it down to four, now three. Yep. Uh, but in any event, we, uh, we did go uh, on November 3rd to Canvas neighbors, including uh, our neighbor at 66. Um, they did express some concerns with respect to a garage and, and easement and so on. Um, but it wasn't until uh, Friday of last week that we um, understood that, the, you know, when all the letters got posted to the website, that we understood that there was a number of other issues. We went back down, uh, I went back down on November 15th to meet with our neighbors at 66 that we shared the driveway with. Um, and we went over uh, the various issues, tried to lay out uh, where the corners of the building and so on would be. 
And frankly, I agreed with them that the original siting um, it could could be improved tremendously, and that's what we'd like to do. Um, I had thought that the way to go about that would be to ask for a, a deferral. And so on Monday morning, I looked into that. I was advised that due to the backlog of approvals that we wouldn't make it back to committee until the middle of 2021. And I don't think that the changes that we're talking about um, are, are worth, you know, that by the time I would get a building permit and get constructing, it would be next fall. And uh, we were hoping to get started in the spring so that it's all closed in by, by next fall. Um, essentially, all we want to do is take exactly the same home footprint and, and carport that we're proposing and bring it forward. We originally understood that the carport structure had to be lined up with the uh, front of the dwellings on either side of us at 62 and 66. Uh, we've since found that that's a permitted encroachment and that we can bring the home forward which is why we no longer need the, uh, the, the rear uh, yard relief. Um, that leaves us with um, the other three matters and um, we're hopeful that the committee uh, can approve it on that basis. I know that there are some other expressed concerns uh, about us encroaching on the easement over the shared driveway. We won't be doing that. Um, you know, a minor variance doesn't permit that. I mean, the easement's still the easement. And in fact, uh, the front corner of the house, the existing house, which is built crookedly on the property, is presently at 0 0.72 off of property line, as you can see on the survey. The new plan would take it to a meter off the property line, so there's about a foot gained in the width of the driveway at that pinch point. Um, there's concern about um, the garage um, at the back, which is sort of a, it's like a semi-detached garage, I guess you could say. And, you know, it, for us, it would be redundant and and uh, we'd be looking at some point to do something with it to to remove it and replace it with a shed. But we don't have a plan for that. We know we can't really just do what we will with with a building that spans a property line. We obviously have to uh, to figure out together how uh, what what, if anything, can be agreed to do there. Um, the uh, there's neighborhoods uh, letters to the effect that we're looking for two car parking in front uh that was never the intention the setback was being driven by what we understood to be um, the, the requirement for placement of the of the structure um, we can't have just a simple parking pad because there's a fire hydrant on the front uh north corner um in the boulevard not on the property but um and so we we can pull a car past the property line into uh, sort of the building envelope, which is why we're proposing uh, what we are. Um, there was a comment about 15 foot ceilings uh, being unnecessary. We haven't proposed 15 foot ceilings. I don't see that on any plans. I'm not sure where that came from. Um, and that's all I'm, I think that's the substance of what I'm aware of. Okay, are you, um, you're well over five minutes. So let's uh, wrap it up, please. You'll have I'll chance be happy to respond to in any event. Thank so. Yeah. Yep, I'll be happy to respond. Thanks, Thank sir. You. Thank you. I see some of the letters, some of the people may have been, uh, looks like they were concerned with the, like you said, the easement issue and the issue with the rear yard setback. So now you're eliminating the rear yard setback. Perhaps there'll be less opposition, uh, but let's see. Okay, first speaker, I guess, is right next door at 66 Runnymede. We've heard that you've uh, uh, eliminated that variance. I don't know if that takes care of Mr. Parker's uh, concerns. So let's hear from Mr. Parker. Darren Parker, 66 yeah. Runnymede. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, I did talk to Tom on Sunday and we talked a bit this morning and um, I do appreciate that he wants to work with us and the neighbors to move the house forward. And we're talking about, you know, he mentioned eight and a half at least feet. The actual variance itself is only uh, two and a half feet. So if we're just looking at the numbers, are we okay? Um, like if he's within the variance, he's still, his house is still going 18 and a half feet uh, past the back of our house and the back of 68 and the back of 70. Um, wanted to point out that, you know, to, the process has been, has been difficult because we never saw his plans. There was no package. Uh, they just sort of arrived in the mail and we've been dealing with this uh, last minute. And we have a shared driveway and a shared garage and in these plans, you know, the shared garage is not there. Half of the, half of the semi-attached garage has disappeared. 
and there are you know grass and trees in the plan on the right of way so you know that creates a lot of concern the right of way is not marked in the plan or usually it is and also there's supposed to be my understanding is there's supposed to be an eight foot radius circle in front of the garage to allow cars to maneuver and the plans show the building covering this eight foot radius so I understand that maybe later in the process where you know building permits means that you can't put the building that far back but you know just looking at these plans that seems like a problem to me mm -hmm. um also uh the general reason as we we're saying like the general reason why this house is going you know 18 or 20 right now 21 feet in the plans uh past our house is to make way for this carport meaning that his building is also starting like the front of the building excluding the carport is actually 12 feet back of our house the front of our house and every other house on the street so so the house has basically been pushed back um and he he made the tom made the point in his opening remarks that you know he's willing to move forward so if he could move it forward 10 feet as i suggested in my letter um i think i think we would be happy because then he would only be pushing back sort of 10 feet behind us he'd be level with the new a renovation going in at 62 and even though they did provide a letter of uh, support they actually revoked that uh, later in the week um, after talking to the neighbors and realizing some of the issues around uh, that people are concerned about so it just brings you to this idea of a carport in the front and actually from the front of the carport to the sidewalk he's got 42 feet of driveway and you know i don't see any carports uh that I know of in Swansea at all, especially not on our street. Most people have to struggle to get a parking pad. Um, so it doesn't seem consistent with the neighborhood to have this house set back so far to have two car parking in the front. And then the extension of 21 feet is basically level with the garage. So until that garage is actually, we, we agree on doing something with it, the back of their house is basically abutting the garage. So from the front of their house to the back of the lot is just wall, you know? so. Everybody at 66, 68, 70, when we come out of our yard, we're just seeing a wall to the south, which is important in Toronto because the south is where the sun is most of the time. So that's basically uh, our complaints. I appreciate Tom's willingness to work with us. And, you know, I thought we were actually going to go for a deferral, but um, but I guess we're, we're putting it to you guys to decide what. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so you're right. See, he's eliminated that variance, but he does still have that depth there, uh, that other variance, and he has not moved it further to the move the to the front so that's what's before us now um, so let's go does anyone have any questions for mr. Parker obviously the issue about the garage not you know it's a semi-detached garage and you're you own the other half right so okay uh, if no one has any questions for mr. Parker let's move on to uh, the next speaker, Christina Chester at 70 Runnymede. Mr. Chair, can we just pause for a moment? We need to end the YouTube stream because it's about to run out. Oh. And we'll restart the other one. I just need confirmation from staff in the office when they restart the second stream. It'll just take a minute. Mm -hmm. This is, are we going to be breaking at some point? This is yeah. the case. There's this crazy, here's the agenda, crazy agenda. Also, we had, we had uh, Chester, but we don't have her anymore, so. Okay. 68. Okay, are we back up or no? Not yet. No, okay. 